you and Miss. Oh, that's the Tom. I was going to call you Mister, and then I thought, no, I should call you. Tom, we're figuring the right way. Here, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, first meeting of the new year. Uh, online stuff already then <laughs> already <laughs> okay <laughs> let's call the meeting to order uh let's get an approval of the agenda i make a motion we approve the agenda All those in favor, then say aye. 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 Opposed? Approval of the minutes from the 15th. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll get crazy. Yep. Both at the same time. All those in favor, then say aye. Aye. Opposed to say, okay. Public comment. We have a few. Do we have any up in the West? Any call it? None. The mobile guys, you're good. <laughs> I cut you off. <laughs> okay. Save us that. Okay, we'll close public here. Number five is if we get to anything there. Uh, do we have? We do not have any other supervisors here. So we're up to number seven already. Kristen coming. So you're doing it? Oh, we have them. They're going to do their own. Come on up to the podium, guys, and tell us who you are and what you're going to do for us. So, and again, Kristen couldn't have a conflict today, couldn't make it. So um, we don't know everything she had planned, but we definitely can do introductions and um, whatever you guys want to discuss. So I'm Ryan Sperry. Um, Kurt was, um, started in Polk County, old enough to know when Bob was in Polk County. Um, but it's about the last 10 years, um, I was in the HR department. My name is Michael Geisinger. I'm the HR for the Regional Cross Extension Educator role with Extension. So I'll be covering the same four county region as Ryan. Uh, and my job ultimately is uh, going to support crop and forage producers in a multi county area by providing research based, unbiased uh, education and information based on the needs of local communities and farms. A little bit of background for me, uh, I was born in River Falls, but I grew up more in central Wisconsin by Marshfield area. Uh, and then I translated to Iowa for school. So that's where I graduated in 19 with a degree. So I'm fairly fresh into it, but excited, excited to be jumping into extension and uh, working with these counties and looking for opportunities to innovate with these resources in the future for hopefully the mutual benefit of all. So. Very glad to be here. Christian can speak a little bit more in the model. Yeah, there's no model of how it's worked. Okay. And she did give us uh, the highlights and stuff. Right, the introductory so, email. Uh, yeah, so we did get that. So, any questions? We had a couple farmers here that might want to ask. Oh, don't bite your tongue today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have to be nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's why if Kristen was here, she'd take the buck. <laughs> well, she is dumb. That's <laughs> right. For the record, that's the one you gotta watch out for. That's the shark. There is a history. <laughs> I guess I, I'm looking for, and then maybe I'm looking for too much. I don't know, but I, I would like to see every six months, let's say, so twice a year. Just a report of how many calls I got, what the calls were about, not where they were, or you know, any anything like that. But I mean, okay, I look at the dairy side of things, and including me, there's about 65 dairy farms left in Polk County. Um, you know, so I, I would just like to see a, a a graph of what's being done in in Polk County. Uh, you know, I don't care what's happening necessarily in the other counties. I want to see what what the need in Polk County is. You know, um, 
like a progress report. Yeah, you know, here's here's what we've done in, in Polk County over the last six months. Here's the calls we've had. Here was the nature of the calls. You know, um, and and just to be able to, I'll say, track what Extension is doing within Polk County. But do you guys kind of have a lead out what what your roles are? I know when Kristen came in, was it? Yeah. To introduce the original concept, um, and you know, and it's going to be split four ways. So, do you guys kind of have a structure to your schedule yet? Quarterly. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's Ryan has a little bit more of an adjustment because he's in Sullivan County, but I've kind of jumped immediately into it, so it's a lot of really but. Currently, what I'm focusing on is there's a reason for me to be super intentional about being up there. So, I might not necessarily drive up to Aaron, for example, for the day just to work in the Aaron office and do things. Here's county office, which is my main office. Um, but if I have a farm visit going on, or if it's this, or Perry, for example, um, then that would be a reason for me to travel in person navigate things. That being said, though, I can be creative about the ways that I kind of address things that are going on in Polk County from any location because I have a cell phone number that people can contact me, uh, people can email me, and virtually in that way, if there's questions that can be answered virtually, or I can at least redirect people in the right direction to get them in touch with other contacts I have in the region. Good. How do we get that number out for people? Is that kind of on our website? Or how do we get yours? I mean, it should, be, it should be posted on the Polk County website. Okay. Uh, I can check with Aries, our support staff today, and see if she was able to do that yet. Because okay. technically, I just added, I was St. Brian Barron through the end of last year, and I just added Pearson Polk. Oh, sure. Okay. This week. This week. Sure. So I'm not sure if she's posted it yet, but that's where it will be listed. Eventually, I'll have some business cards and things like that that I'll be able to hand out too. Okay, just so again, with some some other contacts. And you're about the same too. Yeah, there, I'm getting a new number. I'm not a new number and everything to get out on our website. Right. And like I said, today, so you're crossing soils and focusing on dairy. Um, so there's some other aspects uh, like swine or whatnot. That the state will be adding more statewide positions. That's in process. It isn't done yet. So the first month or two, there's going to be a little gray area. That is uh, kind of crossing soil and dairy. Then I get less involved. Yeah, we'll kind of just keep it. Okay. Well, that's weird. Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, yes. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. So um your approach to programming, will you both do some needs assessment or some type of survey instrument to measure the needs of our producers, whether it's crops or whether it's dairy that drives the development of your programming? Is that is that the process going forward? I'm just kind of piggybacking on you know, the committee's question. So yes, I don't know the exact plan for that. Um, it's not going to be this week, but in the next few months, there's going to be a couple of positions that are going to connect to that. So I think the plan is for the other dairy focused people, the other crops focused people, once we can and do a little standardization, so um, a little consistency across some of the positions, if that makes sense. So, yes, that's part of the plan. Of course, after this year. Yeah, and I would just be back off of that and say, like, we're each working with like program managers in our places. So it's not just, you know, one person is necessarily check, but we're working with people to build a plan of work and an idea of what our programming is going to look like. Part of that program manager program manager's role is to help us build a needs assessment that's kind of in process right now, uh, which again will probably be coming to fruition in the next couple of months. But in the meantime, uh, we're both out networking, asking questions, doing an informal needs assessment, 
just to try and understand better what the needs of the area are, um, kind of what the pulse is on agriculture in each of these areas. We both know what the fertilizer price is doing in fact, right? Well, here's our point. We're, we're trying to justify your job. That's why we pay you. It's, it's the bottom line, right? But what we deal with extension or anything like that. So that's so you know what we're driving to, and that you do have programs, and there is some checks and balances that something is getting done. I think that's kind of our duty there. Yeah, and you asked about reporting. Right? Yeah. So yeah, about like they... six months, we thought, I mean, get a progress report or something like that. Yeah. In addition to that, is that something you're pursuing? Like each, I don't have as much because I'm such a new employee, but uh, since we're also public employees of the state, then we're also like bringing in some. And that's a Kristen question. It's not just for the tool. Yeah. That's across the top. But that's so something that she can that, that we asked about, I think, earlier, even when she was here, that there'd be some yeah. reporting or some kind of justification or whatever. You kind of know what's going on. Yeah, yeah you won't be yeah. in the dark and all this. Because <laughs> I think that's honestly one of the biggest things is just in the dark so long. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> Yeah. So <clears throat> that's why we haven't had one for so long. Of either one, have we? Yeah, right. It's been quite a few years. So, any more questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming up. Thank you. I know you got the rest of the day here too, huh? I'll be just go through stuff. Got half the day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Number eight, Mr. Anderson. Good morning, everyone. See you all again. Glad you made it in the snow and wind. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on uh, the trail network plan project developments. Um, just kind of go through the top six projects to start out with anyways um, that you guys have approved and budgeted for. Uh, the ATV loop up in Sterling. That's a project that will be done in house by our facilities and park staff. They're going to begin that work, uh, I think, in the next few weeks, right, Mo? Like on the 17th? On the 17th, it'll start. And this is again just for the, the trail routes that are up in the, the town of Sterling that involves trail segments and road segments. Um, those trail segments will uh, be exclusive use and will be applied for uh, the state maintenance funding. Just on that. Um, the ATV intensive use park, uh, that's a project that's going to go out for RFP, We're working on the RFP right now. Um, we want to have that RFP back in time to apply for the grants uh, that are available for those ATV funds. Um, so we'll use the RFP figures for the development of that park to apply for the grant. Uh, that grant is due, I believe, April 15th, probably sometime in March for that RFP to be back. Uh, ben and I are working on that. Um, and just for your information, uh, we did some site assessment out there and the original parcel that we were thinking about over uh, on Evergreen towards the West End was a lot of work needed to be done. It was super flat, not very interesting piece. So. We've moved it to the east a few parcels, so it's a little closer to the ATV campground. It can be a, uh, accessed directly from an ATV trail to that park, and uh, has a lot more rolling topography, as more rolling as you can get in the town of Sterling. Um, and it's uh, a little more interesting. It'll make for a better park. So it's still ATV. on Evergreen. Yes, still on Evergreen. Yep, still on Evergreen. Yep. Any questions on that? Great. When did you say the grant was due? April 15th? Yeah. And that's, I believe, a minimum of 50%. Woodley Dam Project. Uh, we'll be getting some assistance from Karsten over in Land and Water to uh, modify that parking lot and site assessment plan. Um, Got some preliminary specs from Mo about the amount of gravel and fencing and that kind of stuff needed. 
We'll verify that property line on the east side of the property between us and the hotel so we can establish that fence line and uh, any landscaping or bushes or shrubs that need to go there. Um, there'll be some state review for that uh, Highway 8 entrance there, since we're gonna have a segregated entrance there, it exists, but make sure that it's all proper for the state. Um, again, the facilities department's gonna perform most of this work and we're gonna apply for grant funding for this project. Deadline for that grant, gentlemen. Same one. Same timeline. The ATV snowmobile is the 15th for all the grant stuff. Yeah. So. I'll verify that in 10 minutes. Questions on that? I'll just picture about the entrance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just past the island. Picture that island. Yeah. There are quite a few cars already parked there with trailers this weekend on Friday when I drove by. Yeah. Gonna get used. Yeah, they're used to it already. Basically. It is for a modern erosion control permit. It was you enter that in house. First you want. But we need it for that west side then. Said that it will get it back in three years. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, let's you stick the stick the DNR again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be on the same schedule as the cat tail too. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get this cat tail done for <laughs> Yeah. Good one. Uh, the next project, the uh, hiking connection between uh, D.D. Kennedy and Algren. Uh, obviously, we're pursuing the option two, which is gaining access through the existing winter easement route that's already there. Uh, ben is going to talk with the property owner this month about the options there for pursuing the easement or purchase if necessary. Um, obviously, we'll need that easement in place or the purchase of that property before the project can move. We're going to explore that option is deeply as we can to try and avoid any of that culvert work that was the other option. A couple other things about that project, that northeastern loop that was identified in the original site plan for Algren has been removed because it accessed it by a beaver dam. Um, and the facilities department has some trail expansion projects planned for the northwestern part of Algren, north of where that parking area is on the west side. Uh, are you going to look into a, a bridge or a culvert? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's also going to look into. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Providing that pedestrian access on the west side there. So, the oh, way. yeah. Well, culvert would save us quite a bit. Get yeah. north to south. Yeah. Questions on that? Okay. Uh, the Wanderoos uh, parking area. Oh, Kim, if we back up just a second. Is there any grants available for what we're doing there? And when would the time frame be for that? Or uh, yeah, there are there are RTP funds, I believe. Uh, I don't know the exact deadline for those. So oh, it's spring as well. I'll double check. Then. Just less though, is there for the walking trail? Yeah, it's usually like a thirty percent match, and it, they're a lot more competitive. Not that we can't thirty percent wouldn't hurt. Yeah. 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 That's quite a bit, really. Just wanted to let you know the difference. Yeah. Uh the yeah, the Wanderers parking area. Again, this is a project that the facilities probably will be working on. Um, I believe it's starting next week. Is that right, Mom? Or early Monday. Uh be a gravel parking lot and investigating uh keeping the lighting options out there and then preliminary specs for the size of the lot and the materials needed to next week okay this we heard monday next monday okay yep. yeah. they're coming that going in that foundation and it's yeah. out there and 
met with the town on what the requirements were. Any in the town in conjunction with that is going to clear some air right away. Oh, uh, going okay. to the west. Hopefully by the end of next week we'll have um, all the grubbing done on there and then start on some of the minor care work that we can get done still yet this early in the year. 16 inches across, but I was digging. But it will be minor. <laughs> yeah. All right, next project is the Gandy Dancer Gateway Trail Enhancement in St. Croix Falls. Uh, Bob and I have been coordinating with the city. Uh, sounds like there might be a meeting with the city next week, potentially, um, to go over the, the needs of the city. Uh, they might need to talk with their planning commission and city council a little bit more about that project. and. Coordinate it with their uh, repaving of that lot project, so it might be potentially next year. Uh, on that project, uh, the city is verbally committed to handle the operations and maintenance for that proposed washroom and uh, lift station building. Get that solidified with them when we have conversations with uh, the city. Uh, and they're also looking at enhancing the pedestrian access or pedestrian crossing across 35 there. Providing some more warning lights and that kind of thing. Again, grants will be applied. That's for all the user groups. That one is some of these. That's a high impact project. project. Yeah. yeah, because that's at the trailhead. And coincidentally, you know, the city is also planning to repay that parking lot and stripe it. So it's a really you know, nice timing, um, but it is the only project where it requires intergovernmental cooperation. So, okay. So this might be a little more of a medium term, but like I, like Tim said, we'll be meeting with them at the beginning. Well, we met with them already, but we're we're going to talk it through again next week. And of course, it's going to need plan commission reviews. Sure. And that's with the bathrooms and everything. Yeah. Should be. Well, this is just going to take longer than I mean because of because of all of that. Yeah, and they have to get their grant money yeah. for that lift station and stuff to yeah. get started. Even, yeah, so. and they've already relocated it next to the 24-7 bathrooms. There's water and sanitary sewer out there, as well as electric. We got to negotiate where the plaza is going to go. That's where the waste signage is. And of course, the trail's changing too. It's right across 35, and then up the hill. it's not going in front of the city. Oh, okay, down and around. We're okay. Bring it back to the to the south. Okay. And it's a biking project, so there's going to be like maintenance equipment out there, you know, uh, tools, bike pumps, that kind of thing. Yeah. Questions on that? Uh, final project of the top six uh, is approving the cross country ski trails and amenities out at DD Kennedy. Uh, again, facilities will be working on this project, um, investigating the best option for a heated facility there, whether it's a year round, year round heated bathrooms, uh, heating the education building, or some other option. Lighting for that area will be on the new building at the road crossings. Start with because when the investigation was done, there isn't a lighted access from the neighboring trails back to the county side yet. Just light those areas to start. And they're investigating a three sided shelter uh, with a fire pit as an option out there, too, and applying for grant permission. Rather than a warming house, we have concerns about creating and maintaining that a three sided shelter. Kind of where we've landed so far, but we would still do the the restrooms, upgrade those. The ones that are tip at DD Kennedy, the ones that are pretty well shot. Yep. Yeah. The water going through them and stuff. So that would still be upgraded. Right. So then we're looking more at a three sided shelter than a fully enclosed heated one. An option for a heated one was possibly heating the education. Especially events, something like that. Might open up have one there. Uh, so we're looking at that. Keep 
bit more rusty. Okay. All right. You're good. Sure. Well, thanks, Jeff. That's good that we're it's moving. Moving forward. Yep. Yeah, it's only the fifth of January to actually get something going. Well, a lot of the credit is Mo's division. I mean, they're hitting the ground they're running. Yep. I mean, they're they got a plan and. Yeah. I'm actually going to yeah, work on it in the same year. Yeah. What are we What are we here for if we got home? Yeah. <laughs> Parts of Rex, you're sitting. Rex, he took all your heat. He Boy, your he took it all. <laughs> Oh, no. yeah, they're already trying to replace all day. If anybody wants to stop and say hi, or say okay. okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, kind of the update for parks and trails. Um, kind of what Tim said, much on uh, <laughs> you know, public works and yes, has been working together on this on the planning on stuff to get these projects going. So, we're getting the ground on it on as many as we can. Um, on other notes, the, the snowmobile trails right now are open south of Highway 8, uh, or excuse me, north of Highway 8. Um, it is on the main page now that people can go on the county main page and on the upper right-hand corner can click to see what the trails are open. Um, after the day snow, we are evaluating whether we'll open up the trails south of Highway 8. Um, so hopefully we'll have a determination on that shortly. Uh, we met last week uh, with Northwest at the Clam Falls Dam structure to get the keys and over kind of what their procedure was and talk to the lady that uh, operates the, the levels and stuff like that. Um, we are going to, we are meeting tomorrow uh, with DNR out, out there uh, to talk about um, if there are any maintenance issue, any other extra DNR requirements, uh, the water levels on that. So that meeting is at 10 o'clock at the dam structure out there. So we do have the keys to the dam. Officially the owner. Officially the owner. Um, subsequently, had a when the caretaker showed um, staff on how to open the gates and how the levels go and stuff. Got a call yesterday. Subsequently, um, she had forgot to lower the level, lower lower the gates again. So she was worried about too much water coming out of the dam. So that was our first attempt going back up there and chiseling out the gates and getting the the gates to come down and monitor that water level. Um, the ice was still safe, though we did punch a couple holes in the ice to see if the there was a gap in the ice and it was not. But uh, that's my update right now. We will be swinging by the Olson farm for a little spot inspection. <laughs> the guns are loaded. <laughs> just, don't worry, I caught him on the dam the other day. <laughs> We take pictures of the keys so you know the owner. <laughs> Give us, we'll put a picture up that we own a dam. We got keys. Somebody's going to say you got keys to a dam. You got, you got two keys, one key works. So. Okay, that's what I got. I better take the picture. So, this might be for either one of you, but it came up yesterday in conversation. What, what's the depth of the component or the flowage or whatever you want to call the back? The depth, average depth. Yeah, I think it's 14 feet was done every report was 14 feet. So yeah, I would say the deepest. deepest. I, 15 is what I've always heard right off the rocks, pretty yeah. much there. Um, DNR report, uh, dam inspection report said that the max depth was 14 feet, and if the dam failed, it would it would go down 10 feet down to bedrock. Or the depth. I go swimming next summer, you can dig me out. Don't know how deep it is when they pull me out. Can you swim with Bruce Camp? No, I can't. That's why I don't know how deep it is. So um how did Sterling mow? I mean, you start working as I mean, how much of that project will be done? Because I think you said a lot of it was just a pecan head and grinding out, you know, trails that are open but not open kind of. I mean right now for the pecan work and dozer work, we're looking at three weeks. Get the entire loop open back up again, um, and then we have coming back after that. We have the um, club is going to help with the signage um, on that, and then Bob's division working on the wayside 
the wayfinding signage um, for the maps and all that's going to be done at all our facilities. So um, we hope to have the majority roughed in here in a month. That'll be the parking lot too, and stuff will be roughed in. Start there, kind of. The it starts at the one spot. This didn't this loop didn't have the parking lot at the start, mm -hmm. you know. So it ties back into the um, the campsite, and then we're off the camping area, curling area. Uh, got a pile of brush to burn there. Got a contractor up there this morning giving us bids on final cleanup and decon uh, work up at that area also. So we're gonna, we're going to tie that in in the parking areas up in Sterling. Does this still get a new parking lot? Bigger one? Off Loop Evergreen? Did not. Loop did oh. not have a parking lot. The intensive park area has a. Oh, the intensive park lot does. With that. Is that the one they moved? We moved what? 140 over? Or yes. 140 yeah. over. We actually moved it much more over to the east. It, it, it's moved over to the east, so it ties in right next to the. Uh, the campground. Through the campground. Okay. So they'll connect. Kind of, well, maybe move what, 240s over. Four or five. Four or five. But it's attached to the trail. All right. So that should do the buffer for the house. It's pretty good then. Okay. And they all tie in. All right. It all gets back. So, so the campground, well, that'll be the main entrance to all of these. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that'll be all right. Is there restrooms there yet? There's one concrete one. restroom. Okay. Still look to see if we need water there or not. We have not. We um, haven't looked at that issue. We'll pull the um, well out there for right now. Yeah. Okay. I think that was just in there. It's going to be under. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Good. Well, plowing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Morning. For ten A. And give you an update on that. I did work with our little internal group in that. We're working on the condo amendments with Brian Winger. He's an attorney. Uh, I spent four hours with Brian on the phone in that last week in that going over some amendments. We got through a lot of it, um, but I'm still working on the final draft and then I'm going to provide it back to him. So hopefully um, I would have that final draft ready for your next meeting. But we're kind of working on his time frame as well. So anyway, so hopefully for sure in the next two meetings, we should be able to get that done. Um, and B, yeah, go ahead. So this is for what he was referring to. Brian Wenger in that, he's an attorney in that, that lives on Balsam Lake and that, and he's just assisting the county in that free and that, sure. of his time and that to provide some suggestions. So anyway, um, I, that's one thing I will say it is a, a positive thing because I've looked at the ordinances and worked with them so much. It's kind of nice to have a new set of eyes on them. And he's catching just some of the things like, well, you should maybe have, you know, about limited to or not limited to here and there to make our ordinances uh, stronger and that and more legally defensible. So, um, so that's what we're looking at. Um, we've got some other proposals and um, trying to reduce the amount of commercialization and intensification of our lakes around here. Um, whether we like to admit it or not, of course, our lakes are getting more and more crowded over the years. And that, if we looked at them 20 years ago, they were much different than what they are now, uh, or especially 40 years ago. So that's what it's kind of going to be. We're going to have a, uh, some substantial amendments proposed to you guys and that to look over. It's probably going to take a couple meetings. Um, and that's go over them and to kind of refine them, and then you guys can do what you want with them. So, so it goes much more in depth than a condo. The original condo amendments was just trying to reduce the number of residential dwelling units on one particular lake lot. This is going into other aspects. So, you know, you kind of see some of that right now. 
kind of yeah. a preview. Yeah, just kind of a but yeah, there's he dug in there way deep. But so it'll, it'll, it'll the condo provisions that we're talking about are affecting both the subdivision provisions of the code of ordinances and the shoreland ordinance provisions because of course and that now especially with our three towns that are doing their own use zoning and that in order to take in limited density and then through our our chapter 18 subdivision ordinance provisions we have to take and amend that ordinance to have any kind of control on density for those towns so and those towns do rely on the county and that to handle their subdivision Questions on that? Yeah. I have meetings on the next well we can get started at the next. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of time in it and that already and that is yeah. just, and that we're kind of operating on with that with his time schedule as well. So yep. Um and B then? Yep. You guys all received a copy of an email in that that we had received from Sylvia Topness um, and that regarding their wishes and that to leave the egg tourism amendments alone for now and that and maybe they might come back at a later date um, but before we had received that email um, and at the last meeting you guys had directed staff to go through and kind of create another proposal and possibly look at opening it up to other uses besides just egg tourism um, I had already created the bulk of that text and that before we got that uh, email from them and I believe Mayor Isaacson was supportive of Sylvia's uh, wishes to take and postpone as well. Um, however, I think as long as I did spend the time in that to create the text and that, if you guys want to go through it, I can show you um, an option. It really goes away from the whole egg tourism concept and it goes into more of a temporary campground concept and that, that anybody in the county could uh, do if they meet the requirements. So, you guys want to? Yes, because I think even though they wanted it, I mean, we just take the words egg tourism out because they haven't defined it for us anyway. But we should. Yeah, I'm fine for looking. I mean, I'm I'm fine with saying, you know, walk away from it because they want us to. So I'm fine with walking away. But I think at the same point, <clears throat> it needs to be known that the ability for them to do it has always been there. Yeah. I mean, correct. the the, yeah. the temporary campground is there. They can still do it. I mean, it's, you know, yeah, it's three weekends a year, but it's what? And campers, you know, instead of the three or whatever. So the ability to do it is still there. It always has been there. And, you know, I would guess whenever it is they come back to us, I'd like to them to come back and say, well, we tried it. Here's why it doesn't work. I mean, because there is an option out there for them to do. So no, but this part now he did, he did it to kind of protect us from these bigger campgrounds. Stuff yep. coming in. So B and C are kind of going to run together right now. Yeah. In this state. Yeah. Um, and that I took and, you know, was having a lot of problems trying to define egg tourism and an egg tourism provider, a farm. And that, so, and when we look at a land use policy, and that, do we really care whether they're there and that for a wedding that weekend? Do we care if they're up there deer hunting on their land that weekend? Do we care if they're going for a horse event? Um, we don't really care what the purpose is as far as setbacks go, as far as having adequate sewer, as far as meeting public health requirements. Uh, so those are kind of all the same. I mean, the, the reason for them to take and do it would be for doing egg tourism, but somebody else that owns property in the county may have a totally different other reason that they would like to be able to have the same opportunity. So that's what we did. We might as well jump into the text. Um, I just want to take and go back to the intensity of the, the lakes. One of the things that is currently allowed is if a property is zoned recreational, business, commercial, and that our B2 zoning classification. Right now, recreational camps, marinas, resorts, campgrounds, and manufactured home parks are all in allowed use automatically. And so they could come in and ask for a bait shop under sporting goods. And then all of a sudden, maybe that wasn't a good business model. So then they jump into a campground and zoning oversight in, that in order to do that, um, as long as they've met the normal requirements with public health and our few conditions that we've got currently, they'd be able to do it. So um, 
So we took that and we made them a conditional use. So all those same exact uses just shifted into A212 here. Um, so now, and that in order to switch amongst the uses, they would have to come and get approved through you guys. And it would still require the rezone through the town. So we're not taking any authority away from the town. The, the town would still have the say on the rezone portion and the conditional use portion then would be coming to you guys and you guys could create extra conditions above and beyond like you would anything else. So that would be a condition. Questions on that? Just, just one, if you back up to B, because I have no idea how big is a miniature golf, you know, that would still be allowed. I mean, space-wise, how much, you know, does it take? Because I look at the rest, I mean, restaurant, tavern, recreational sales and service, sporting goods, bait shops. Realistically, that's a house size, you know, or, or a little more. Yeah. So just how big is that miniature golf that all of a sudden that I that I still can do? I'm not against it. I'm just saying, you know, how big of a spot do you actually need to do it in? Well, that would be an option in that that you guys can take. You can say that any use in the commercial district is going to be a conditional use. And that well, the reason why we passed, we, took them, we hit these ones is because of increasing of occupancy or dwelling units where they could have more people. You know, manufactured home parts going to have more units. Yeah. You know, camp yeah, well, no, I'm not against miniature golf. I'm just saying how big of it, you know. How many holes are you going to play, Dave? 972. I'm not playing, I'm not playing Annie. One on Highway 80 is about an acre. If that. 200 by 200. Yeah. Okay. But, but I mean, that's that one. Well, that's the reason why we took and moved some of them was just because those are going to have more residential dwellings than that associated. Yeah, yeah. 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 people, people, people stay. stay. Yeah. Yeah. Rest yeah. No, like I said, I just I'm fine with it being there. I just number seven can always go down and be a conditional use too. Yeah. And I think that's something that, that that we'll talk more about and that with the other condominium and commercialization of our lakes and that because we've got some people in there too. I just wanted to show you that we've got it proposed as a CUP. So now we can talk about the just the prerequisite conditions. This line cables um, sure. going forward. So this is our travel trailer portion of the code of ordinances, section 40 key 309. Here we have just our normal travel trailer is not allowed for more than 14 days in a 60-day period on a vacant piece of land. And that they're able to keep it on the property for storage. And that if you've got a dwelling, you can take and pull a permit and that. For one year, if you're building a new dwelling, as long as you pull the permits for a new dwelling and have a sewer system installed. This is our seasonal permit provision, D, which allows somebody in that that's got a piece of land that doesn't have a dwelling, put in a sewer system and have their camper on the property from May 15th through December 1st. We've got the provision for the larger landowner. <laughs> If they've got 40 acres, then they can have a camper there year round, and they only needed to have a non plumbing sewer system like a privy, and that where we ran into these a little bit smaller ones, um, and that where they can back the land. We've got that exemption already out of it. Provision F here is the start of a temporary campground permit process that could be done. We've got a bunch of conditions that I kept the same as our normal campground conditions. So that's why we reference uh, provision G, conditions 9 to 30 up there. But the specific ones that would be for a temporary campground um, user would be the egg tourism folks requested that it was one of our egg zoning classifications. So that was where I limited the, those three zoning districts. We also have a farmland preservation district, but we really don't have any land in the county that's zoned that way. That if somebody's going to use it, so these are going to be property is not within a thousand feet of a class one lake. The reason why we had this provision in there is because we have all these travel trailer rules because people say I'm you know living on a lake, I'm paying high property taxes to be on a class one lake. I'm doing that because I don't want to be like I'm in a camp. 
want you know both lots on each side of me to have you know multiple camping <coughs> uh, so that's why we have that provision proposed the egg tourism folks were okay with uh three campers on at any time on the property which is the threshold for public health places as well maximum of 10 guests from 11 p.m. to 7 p.m. This is coming from the tourist rooming house conditions. Um, in our tourist rooming house, you can have a maximum of eight during the quiet hours of calm, um, and then you can have up to 12 during the day or the non-quiet hours. So I kind of kept the similar philosophy between these two. And here though, if you got three campers, I was trying to think if you had two families of four, that's eight. And then maybe you got grandma and grandpa in the third camper, that's 10, you know, or you could have any combination, you know, and if you only got two campers there, you could have five in each, you know, so um, that's a complete arbitrary number. I was just trying to carry over that concept from the tourist house. Maximum of 15 guests during the day. That was 12 before, but I figured in that sense we bumped at that uh, quiet hours time from 8 to 10 that we should bump the number during the day a little bit too. And for the ag tourism folks, this would take and provide them, you know, the ability to hold some classes and stuff of up to 15 people. So that might be a little small because what if they have an event like Baker's Apple deal? I mean, they'll have 100 people there during the day. But they well, don't need this. They don't need this if they're not for, for that. If they're no. going to be doing a class of that size. They're going to fall into other zoning requirements okay. that are going to have different. Yeah, if they call it so, in bigger stuff, or if that many people want to stay because they got that field across the road and stuff. An arbitrary number. You guys can yeah. set it whatever okay. you want. Um, you know, but we just probably want to avoid the tourist rooming house for 26 people. Trying to yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just kind of a general one, and maybe it's kind of too obvious, but the sleeping accommodations for any guest must be within their own RV or tent. So in other words, the property owner can't be supplying the RV and then renting it out as a short-term rental. Could we leave tent in there or take tents out? They can, the tents can be put up. Okay. So do you have to put that in number three, that it's a a maximum of three campers slash tents because can you have three campers and then can you have three tents? Good uh, thing. What I'd like to change that to would be camping unit because camping unit is defined in the ordinance as all of our motor homes, RVs, and tents. So that would would that then let me come up and pitch three tents? So at that point. And you need your you can have three tents or three tents. Right. Three units. Okay. Not six. Okay, well, once I once I put up my tents, where's my water and my bathroom facilities? That's that would be in the that's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Just sit here and be quiet again. That's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, this is kind of hot. Right. Call the can. Just to follow up to Justin, but say three tents. I I'm not against tents, but I think it was it was one of the hunting magazines I read. There was like a 35 unit tent. It was like the size of a little beer. Oh yeah. And I, but I I don't say it should be limit the size of a tent. I'm just saying they're out there. Yeah, literally in that, all these conditions, I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas yeah, yeah, yeah. like, um, what up, we can yeah. regulate and, and then, then as up. a starting point then of what? where you want to go. But then if you don't have 10 people, why would you put a can? You know, and then yeah, and chicken ran. Yeah. this in my mind. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you want to put up one of Doug's tents, you could have one one tent up and have all 15 people. Yeah. Or 10 for the night. Well, but 15 in the day yeah. and, and 10 at night. But that tent has to be can't be the property owner can't put that right <clears throat> doug has to bring his tent with wife would own that lease it out <laughs> no, that's not going to work <laughs> <laughs> so 
So he's looking for a way around it. There's a way to come. Provision seven is kind of a more of an administration suggestion for you. Um, we were talking about, you know, weekends. Well, then you got a three day weekend or a four day weekend. You know, what is a weekend? How many nights is it kind of how we'd like to get down to? Um, we already got a 14 day, you know, or a 14 night provision. So I thought it made sense. And then to kind of put a number of nights in that, that they're able to be there. Um, seven in that, if you had three weekends, you know, if it's a Friday and Saturday night, they come in on Friday, they leave on Sunday, that's only six, so I gave one grace day. Uh, the way that this is written is that it would be um, an act where you could take it all one shot, you could do seven nights in a row, or you could do seven different nights throughout the year. Uh, again, that's an arbitrary number you guys can say. Yeah, so you, could, you don't have to do the weekend, you could do seven Wednesdays in a row if you Pick that day that chose that or whatever day. it is you want to do because maybe I'm just going to have the event for one day and put it this way. And that, let's what say did they we, ask for? They asked for 26 up north. Up north. Let's 40. say, and that three guys go in and they buy a 40 or an 80 or however many acres that they want, and they want to have multiple campers on one particular 40 because they don't want to wreck their whole hunting on the whole 120, let's say. Um, and that they've taken full permit. All in that one time and that for their year, they could legally move in and that the Friday before or whenever they wanted to, and that and they could move out on Thanksgiving, you know, and then they'd be able to be legal having multiple campers. Right. Could do that annual seasonal too. These people could. You know, and that if they wanted more days, we can go back up to be up there, that annual seasonal permit. May 15th at the time. The problem with the annual seasonal and that is that they have to have a full sewer system in the ground and that versus this here and that might not require a full sewer. I mean, if they're gonna if if they they have have 26 weeks, that's something they should look at there. Well, so, but uh, yeah, I mean the more the more that it's gonna be used in theory, then the more reason to have that the exactly. sewer system and, and water and, and, and all of that. I mean so they still have that option. They, if they wanted more times, they could move up to that one. Or let's say that they have an event center and that we've got a lot of wedding burns in yep. County, and let's say that they want to offer a special package and that, that you can take and bring your camper and that and stay overnight the night of your group or whatever they're on site, um, they'd be able to do that seven nights out of and for up to three campers. There, there, there's options are there without limiting it to egg tourism or a specialty thing then it can be almost anything they want yeah correct because i mean really in that all of our concerns are noise number of people traffic parking all of that's going to be the same whether they're there to learn about farming or whether they're to, there to learn about hunting or whether they're there to learn about cars you know whatever it might be for a wedding yeah for wedding. so any of it for a family like, reunion anything yeah, yeah. But I, I think uh, because if we go, if we went down the ag tourism road alone, it would have just been a matter of time till somebody come in and said, "Well, this is what I want to do," but not ag tourism. I want to come you know, so think that way. You know, no matter what happens, I think the idea of can I say throwing ag tourism out, bringing everybody in is is a good idea. That's yeah. Yep. I think so, it covers them. Take that flexibility for anyone, anyone. And we're still trying to keep them off of our class one lakes, you know, and but yet we're still the conditions are pretty easy to obtain. And it looks like there's a lot of them, but I think you're gonna see that a lot of them are well, I gotta do it anyway, or that's common sense, you know. And the ones that you're coming up to also are for uh, Brian Hobbs. The sanitary ones are also in there, aren't they? Coming. Yep. Yeah, they're coming. All right. Let's keep going. Patience. This is kind of a uh, unique provision that can be in there if the property owner fails to comply with any of the conditions above, that their temporary campground permit would be revoked, and then they wouldn't be able to get it for the following year. Of course, we can revoke any land use permit. And that the main thing here is that let's say that they only use three of their nights. That we can't revoke their permit and then they come back and say, Well, I'm going to pull a permit again for my other four nights. This is going to be 
kind of like we do our conversion rate. So, but what if I what if I get my permit pulled on December first? I can start up again on January first. What year from date or something? Yeah, yeah, that's year. that's that's what I was thinking. I mean, a year. You know, there's, there's a lot of difference in is if it's a year July today to or is it, you know, just the following year. Now, if I get my, you know, if I get it pulled first of March, well, then it is pretty much a year. But, yeah. you know, I, I don't care. I'm just. I would say change it and, that and uh, just get rid of the following year. Uh, It'd be one year from date of violation. Yeah. Revocation, data revocation. Yeah. yeah. So if it was March, April, it doesn't matter. It'd be the next March or April, be a full year. Then that's almost like the, the regular permit system. Sanitary sewer, that they got two years. It's from the data issue. So, so. I would, you know, I look at all the things like, you know, you can't be a thousand feet from a plus one lake, three campers at a time, this many people from this time. Who's going to enforce all that? Well, and then so like the thousand feet from a lake, that's easy. And if you come in and apply for a permit and you're within a thousand feet, we're not going to issue a permit to do it. You yeah. Know, the three campers and that, we're going to assume that they're going to do it, but it's pretty easy to take a picture of four campers there and that, and then we can just revoke the permit. Um, you know, the number of people on there, we had this with the Arkells, you know, and that where they were documenting it. So, um, Complaint driven. Yeah. yeah, it has to be it, complaint it, it driven. Is, that's, you just otherwise, you'd have to have 10 well, people. Yeah, I know. Can you have like a later sign? Even part of the license. So you had this one in on these dates. You know, so there's there's something that we have to get back from them. That's so I can kind of get there. But another. Let's go through all of them. Right. Anyway, we got two pages of right. conditions. Yes. Been told Apparently, we should have all just shut up until he was done. <laughs> questions Who's at left? the end. Tracy, okay. ask a question. Questions at the end. Oh, yes. <laughs> that county and that seeing a lot of pressure in that from high density campgrounds. Um, they've got a campground ad hoc committee up there, basically working on their ordinances. Uh, they actually just went through and approved them here within the last couple of months. So I'm trying to save you guys some work in that, going through all of that. Um, and I pulled a lot of ideas from them and Baron County. Um, both of them kind of had some different stuff. So that's where a lot of this, these ideas came from. So she goes into our licensed travel trailer parks and campgrounds. And again, to try to reduce some of the density in these campgrounds, uh, I'm sure you've seen them up in like Hayward and that the KOA up there where they're socked in there really tight. Just to only want that they can have bigger areas, you know, bigger spaces. Suggestions that uh, those counties are doing. You got a minimum of five acres for any travel trailer park. Got that as well. And that's so you only got a two acre lot here. Maximum number of travel trailers currently is 15 per acre. And I took in uh, holes, dropping that to 10 per developable acre. In other words, if we got 20 acres of swamp and we got three acres of high ground, you know, that we don't consider the whole 20 acres for our density. That's one of the things in that that Burnett County has included that I thought was really good. The maximum number of camping units in any travel trailer park or campground shall be. That's kind of a new concept that Burnett County and Barron County have, and that, and they're both at around 100, um, and that to set that max. So um, I don't know how many, like the KOA and Hayward has, but it's probably much more than that. That's an arbitrary number. You don't have to limit the total maximum. Um, it's kind of like this. You'd have to have 100 acres to max out of developable. Yeah, so it still takes quite that's a area still, to spread them out. That's a substantial 
campground of that size, you know, maybe that's three forties basically. By the time you have your improvements and stuff going in, I mean you're building roads three quarters. Yeah, you and you'd be lucky to get it in at 120. I mean, once you take out swamps, the trees, the, the trees you know, holes, you know. They're doing it up there because I, I'm doing one up there. And it, I think I bought enough land to put 400 in. It, it's on, uh, on zone township. Sand Lake up in the spring. That's right. And Paul's got to sign up campground. I mean, they can just, this guy's got everything plotted out. He can get up, I think, 450. <laughs> out the middle of nowhere. He's got one over in Washburn that's like 200 spots and it's full. That's why he's doing it. And even our, you know, more recent campgrounds that have just started up, they're, they're all expanding. Yeah. Well, we just did one from Balsam here. The existing conditions is that a uh, travel trailer park or campground has to be screened, and that just like a mobile home park uh, will. So that's one condition. I should say conditions one through eight here are specific just for uh, campground, and the blue stuff in that in number nine, those conditions are what I also cited in the temporary campground provisions, and a lot of that's going to be the same. So that we just had the similar language that we didn't have. Two provisions of the ordinance that we duplicated ourselves in each one. That's why I just referenced this. Okay, so what about um, campgrounds that are already licensed and operating now? When we make these changes, then do they apply to them? So an expansion of an existing travel tour park to require a new condition. Only if they expand. If they stay. If they expand. If they stay the same status quo, they're grandfathered in, or they're not. Okay. Like so an park shall not be constructed within one mile of a public lake access. This is going to kind of tailor into those condo uh, provisions that we've been talking about and the over intensification of a lake. Um, and that's because if we have you know multiple hundred unit campgrounds, like you know, and that with the KFO stuff, and that you know the 999ers, or they're operating at 100, and they can just open up multiple of them so that's just an idea and that and you'll see other provisions like that coming but then i could still be on the lake if i was on the right lake i could be a mile from the public access would be a tough one to do leave it in there and that and for now yeah it will make sense maybe with a little bit more of the other stuff yeah, that Number seven here is a Burnett County provision. Almost verbatim. Kind of unique because it's talking about group, group tent campsites, and that no group may stay more than two weeks. I don't know if they're seeing some of that being proposed or if they're having issues with that up there. Uh, but in other words, be limited to a two week stay at I don't know, it almost kind of goes back into like the homelessness stuff or something. I don't know. Yeah, we have people all, all year. No idea. And that, and then you probably need a definition of what a group tent campsite is, you know, because what does that really mean? I don't know. Doug's big tent. <laughs> Two tents is a group. <laughs> uh, typically, like these campgrounds, they have their, you know, no hookup area, that their tent slate area, you know, that be our. But this is this is still within campground. the campground. Yeah. That'd be like Apple River campground with the wind tent sites there. Oh yeah. They can't be there more than two weeks. Otherwise they move in, they live there all. Yeah. 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 Because we get a lot of different permits and that from these campgrounds, 
about what can I do? You know, can I have a little shed next to my camper and that to store my grill in and my chairs, my patio furniture? And it's been kind of wild west. I'll say it's like that because we haven't had anything. And so our normal conditions that are what applies because they're meeting the setbacks because the campsite might be in the middle of a larger parcel and that and they can build garages, they can have carports for their cars, everything, you know, and that's all. This here is this type of barren land. And it got 100 square feet or less in size and 12 feet. So it's basically like a little yard shed. So you could have a 10 by 10, 12 feet tall, and a little yard shed next to it. You can change the size on that. Administratively, that's vision number eight there. Um, one of the big things in that with this too, that's really important is that they cannot be connected to the traffic trailer, either the storage structure, so I can't have an attached garage to my travel trailer, um, or running decks, patios, and screen porches, that they would be freestanding so that you basically put poles and that alongside the camper so that the camper can be removed and you can put in a new one and that without it being wrecking your garage or your deck. Um, we actually have had issues with that um, up in Easy Living. We've got a lot of people in that that try to connect stuff. So that one right there is going to be a problem. Well, eight is all new, isn't it? All new. You know, okay. As far as the limitations, you know, that's a policy choice for you guys. And that, but as far as administration, and that is, I think, is a great idea. Something in there that it cannot be connected to the trailer and to have some kind of guideline. Yeah. Sure. So up there, they got carports. The one that we actually had to make them move it from being attached to the travel trailer. They had an attached garage, it was a one car garage. They had a bathroom in it with a whirlpool. They had a loft area that they were having a bunk house in, and that was a bedroom up in the loft. And of course, it was not permitted, you know, um, and that's what we ended up going in and making it move from the travel trailer and then taking it in. So there could be some pretty extravagant or elaborate yeah. additions to a travel trailer. Yeah, that's what I'm calling a split wall. Who provisions here are all new <laughs> as well. These would be what's applying to a temporary campground and a normal camp. We need to take and probably have a limitation on what size the site would be. 25 by 40. It's not real big. Think about a travel trailer being eight or eight foot six wide. Most of them nowadays have a slide out that kicks out at least on one side. They're either a two or a three foot slide. So now we're up to 11 feet. You got another slide out that kicks out on the other side. You know, that could be another two or three feet. You're pushing almost 14 feet wide on some of them if they had the slide outs perfect. And that, and now we throw a 10 by 10 shed along it. So 25 gets pretty tight on there. So that's where I suggested bumping in that 40 by 60, which is, I believe, what's the next. Dumb question, Jason. <clears throat> um, on impervious uh, surfaces, you add all of that up, and then when you look at how many travel trailers per acre, is there anything, any rules anywhere that we got to watch that? So this here, and that would be the actual site, the yard, and everything. You know that you only have like one driveway bed in there, like you would on a normal. Um, Probably looking at 2,500 square feet in an acre, and that is what our subdivision ordinance says. And that for like a major plat, um, and that per lot you'd figure 2,500 square feet of impervious. Just because uh, you know when you if you know most of these trailers are at least 30 feet, you know, and if we're pushing just for easy math, 15 feet wide, you got 450 square feet there. You got 200 for the the deck, and you got 100 square feet for a storage shed. Someone taking your campers. 
as what would kick in and as when the travel trailer acre. We have 10 an acre. And that's what would kick in though is when this would was developed and that they'd be disturbing more than one acre at a time. So it would kick into the stormwater erosion control ordinance. So they would have to have stormwater erosion. So you, you guys cover that. So yeah, so but because they're thirty foot long campers, that's why I bumped it to sixty feet. Because you put a four door pickup in front of your camper, which most people that have campers are going to have a pickup, and that there you go, you're ready to sixty feet, working alongside the main driveway. Everybody moves the campground. Um, each travel trailer, just just because of that, I mean, do we consider more than sixty feet? Because you are going to take up that whole sixty feet. We got the forty foot width. Do we we put that you have to have parking for two? Yes, Is there sir. parking provision anywhere? Yeah, there is one and a half. Twenty four and a half. Okay. What does that mean? One and a half. Yeah, about ten by twenty and a but it's a, by twenty. It's always been a bicycle. Privilege. That is not a new provision. That's the way it's been. Yeah. So I don't know what it means. So maybe we should just put that to two. Take the half out. Be nice. <laughs> Let's just park that. Is there a single yes, yes, or a pickup in a motorcycle or yeah. two small cars? And then just to find the size of that site, do we want them 10 by 20? We have well, a spot where in our off street parking requirements. Yeah. That, yeah, so that, yeah. But I mean, we could just put it maybe behind that, that they're 10 by 20. So you'd need a 20 by 20 for the two of them. They said it's there. They're not looking somewhere to find out what's that number to where it is. That might, yeah, that might be a lot easier than this one and a half. Yeah, I don't know whoever comes up with the half numbers. Uh, quiet hours got them here in that versus when we were up there talking about occupancy and that between the hours a day because quiet hours would apply to a normal campground then and a temporary. And also, with that provision, is all fires would be extinguished after quiet hours. That's the same as George Rooming Hall. So, so the same no, stuff is a lot of these are probably the same. Okay. Yep. Like number 12, and that owner operator was that 24 hour contact number, you know, when they apply for their permit, you know, versus the initial use or the temporary campgrounds. All pets must be contained in the rental property, unless they're on public property. Pets must be on the campground. Same as two acres. Property lines being surveyed with boundary every stake by a land surveyor. Basically, if you got any kind of campground, you want to be a campground property not trespassing. All conditions that apply to campers shall be provided at the check. So we've got it on the tourist rooming house that should be included as part of their rental contract. This year, I'm like, we're not going to have a rental contract probably. So as long as they provide it, we'll do it. Catch all in that, that they just comply with all federal, state, county, and local laws. Existing septic system to pass inspection and adequate sanitary that's just for the catch all. Um, it lists various tent sites and RV sites. One of the things from the health department, though, that's related to the septic is that toilets shall be provided within 400 feet from the campsite where the camping unit or the tent doesn't have a bathroom. In other words, our group tent sites or any tent site, you can have to be within 400 feet of a public tent. Owner or operator must reside on site. The advertisement shows include their permit number, the health department license number. That's the same as two or three. Number 20, at least one fire extinguisher shall be made available on the campground. That's a public health requirement. Where would we, they expect them to be? 
Yeah. Extinguisher? Yeah. For that? Well, it'd probably be on their site plan and that, but it'd be inside of an open building is what the health code is. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, John. I guess I Tim, you said inside an open building, but I was taking back to what Tim said with a four hundred acre. You're yeah. a long ways from a fire extinguisher. Yeah. You're off yeah. Of we're limited in, I mean, acres, but yeah. And, that, and there, and that's all the health code requires is that one 24 hour access to an open public building for the fire extinguisher. You just put a pole up and pull it out the middle. Good luck. So, AT and Oprah's got them in them anyway. You know, and that, all these RVs, they got them. Owner operator must reside on site. What if I own two campgrounds five miles apart? Oh, you have a manager or a camp host in that? That'd be considered the operator that owns the property. 21 and 22 kind of go hand in hand. 21 is always talking about a site map and laying out where all the water and sewer and recreation is. Uh, that requires any approval through us so that somebody just can't go in and it's a piece by piece camp because then we're in an expanding campground and then we have to go back to the condition of the original. That's why we've got a catch provision there and that that they have to have approval from our office. 22, the reason why that kind of goes with 21s is 22 is all about marking the campsites and having those matched in that site map, of course. And also they have to provide signage to the nearest emergency telephone and that, which is a public health requirement. They have to provide it. Up with the phone, because there's no phone wires to have these places because they don't put them in. Public health requirement. Fire extinguisher. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Same sign. Yeah. That isn't there. <laughs> you want to take an ad in that that they have to have okay. signage for the fire extinguisher? I mean, if you're going to make them have a, a telephone, wouldn't that make sense to have? Yeah. Safety. Be the, yeah, be the spot where you get for safety. Yeah. yeah. You know, and maybe shit, you know, fire or, uh, first aid kits there too. Yeah. Well, if you want first aid kits too? Well, I don't know. I'm just. I mean, it, it should all be in the same spot. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Same spot, what? Safety. So you guys were talking about like a log as far as how many people and stuff. So the camp ground would have to have pictures book and then that would be the nine one one emergency measure. Not required by the health department, but I already talked about the two parking uh Calls. 25 is the minimum setback from any camping unit. A camping unit is used there for an RV, increasing the setback from 40 feet to 50 feet. No age concerns. And since it's talking about setbacks, they are showing this water. I use travel trailer in that provision because it would allow somebody to tent within the 75 foot setback. Um, and that's that's why I use travel trailer, not camp. Twenty six is a provision in that that we've actually had in our ordinance. Um, I left it in there. I think it could go away uh, because we've already got a catch all. And that, as far as complying with all other local laws in the PTCP uh, 79, that's the health code, which for kind of goes with the health requirements. And I left it in there just for you guys to look at, but I think it's kind of suggested. 
26 you could take out because it's covered. Twenty-seven is just that it meets the applicable town and county subdivision regulations. This is going to come into our new provisions for the condo amendments for amending the subdivision ordinance for any regulation incidents to these new proposed amendments. Um, so that's why I left it open-ended and should. Be Twenty-eight is allowing a single family dwelling for that owner or operator to reside in. And I did clarify it though that it cannot be a short term basis. Of course, if they want to take and rent out cabins or other single family dwellings, then they need to look at going towards the resort. That, but this is a camp town. So basically, you got one camp operator, one host, whatever, and then all the campsites that people. Any lake access, she'll be limited to the number of docks and watercraft allowed by the DNR without being classified as a. So the DNR has classifications just for normal riparian owners, as far as the number of boats and docks they can have based on their shoreline frontage. And then they've got a classification of being permitted as marine as the DNR, which is going to allow you to have much more boats. Um, so this here would not increase the density of the number of boats on a small lake for example um because they would be what they could normally is there a, a dnr number that we can reference there you think if it's better is it, is it coming in the next stuff too and that is that we did kind of set a temporary limit on the number of bolts or a potential limit on the okay. number of bolts on a property without being classified as that that would also could buy, apply here. Could apply to both there. Okay. I had shoreline frontage in that provision, and then I took it out because who knows if the DNR changes the rule or something. I thought this would be more broad and would be better served. <laughs> sure. Yeah, if they change their stuff, we'd have to change everything. Okay, provision 30. This is everything. It looks like a lot, uh, but it's everything that's going to be required of a normal campground anyway through public health. Brian Hobbs in that at the last meeting, and then you had requested him to provide a list, him and Jacob, um, of everything that they would be looking for in a new campground. Um, this is the stuff that is really specific to them, besides or other stuff. Like I said, when we went through it, some of that stuff is required by public health. I just tried to organize it accordingly. But for the public health side, you know, the campsites need to be located in areas that have water so people can't go to go um, or any other health hazard. Campsites are not allowed to be within 100 feet of a barn, petting zoo, it's the administrative colon text. I think it's pretty open. Um, Audible <clears throat> water must be provided within 400 feet of each campsite. Water does not fall. Well, it has to be tested for bacteria annual, annually and nitrate at least once. This happened in that one. Water riser pipes. Adding the water must be at least eight feet above ground, the outlet pointing down, and if that's below the device, installed. Believe it or not, for zero up to 100 campsites, that even if the campers have their own bathroom inside, we have to provide it. Provision 43. Gender. Well, leave it alone. Homer talk. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. Like, like make another yeah. buck. They can't it's make it uniform, just one. It's got to be a gender so that we get that fight going like at the school. That's the only reason. Yeah. 
Okay. You, you could ask Brian Hobbs to do that if one satellite would satisfy. Um, and then we'll go to Sean. But it doesn't even have to be handicapped, too, then. So, I mean, we had all that to it. Uh, actual, the actual administrative code says one bathroom per sex. Okay. But it doesn't say it has to be handicapped one because they are different sizes. So, now this is all out of uh, ATCP 79. We can't change it. But we should reference that at number 30. Uh, the public health, which requires the following from ATCP 79. So, people know we didn't make these numbers okay. up. How does that sound? And it, we don't get I'll let you do some kind of a citation. So, and other requirements in ATCP 79. Yeah. But these are. In that that we can't change so people know that we didn't make these up so on on b jason <laughs> uh not within 100 feet of a barn or enclosure housing an animal is a dog, dog and a cat an animal <laughs> i don't know that's what i mean it's kind of broad you know and that source of order well what the source of order dog or a cat yeah or a dog house yeah i know i'm just you know if if you can't be within a hundred feet of an enclosure housing an animal, we need you your neighbor that's dog. got his dog or his cat in the house in the house in, in his trailer is we need to use bold mud bog for an example because they have campers and that out that and what was a pasture and that and Brian Hobbs when I was out there with him and that he had concerns about being in a pasture because there was cow pies on that around literally the cows are still out there. And then if a kid is out there and falls, you know, a small kid falls in that into the cow pie, then they could put that in their mouth. And that, so that was it. He'll be okay. Been there, done that lots of times. Right, I like drinking the milk. Yeah. Yeah. So, another <laughs> says it's it's uh, liquid poison. Oh, Jason, so he is the last one that's in a sanitary dump station. It's the health code as well. They have 20 sites or more. They have to provide a dump station on site. If they have less than 20 sites, they can take and have an agreement with a dump station within 25 miles to allow their campers to go and dump their waste at that dump station so that they're providing it within 25 minutes. So Jason, number C underneath 30. So water cools and water coolers and bottled water are not sufficient. So take me back to the topic we were just on. How does that there's no well? It's bottled water. So how does that work? Well, I think that's particular you know, situations not licensed. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. Yeah. Blend that. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking for a little clarity. I apologize. I had to use the best friend. example. <laughs> <laughs> I used that as an example of what not to do. Of what not to do. <laughs> but these are the ones we can't change. See, so now you caught one already. How do you yeah. found it? <laughs> Asking for a friend. That's a good one. <laughs> So under F, the temporary campground, all of that falls, they got to meet the G requirements. Some degree wasn't applicable. 9230, the blue stuff. So the temporary campground people have to meet 9230, which is so, yep. Yep. so they got to meet green and blue to be a temporary. So do you need, do we need under G, do we need to put temporary campground up there too then? See where you have it under F. Yeah. I just, I just didn't want to duplicate because it's quite lengthy for that. And when I was reading Burnett County's ordinance and that, it was confusing because it had the same text like three or four different places. And it just seemed well. So that's where I thought and that was better. And that, if we want, we can double it up. But... As long as, you know, when somebody gets it, they get the color text of it. Blue stuff, everybody, everybody has to go with that. So, like when we do a tourist rooming house and when we do a, 
on a temporary campground if it's passed. And that they basically fill out the front side of the land use permit application. And then we have pre made up forms like that, with all the conditions and that, that we slap on the back and that, or we would include it as an attachment of their permit. So that they have a very. And it's another dump spot. In regards to the signage, so so it's in here that they have to do with, with technology and everything that we have now. Is it something that we should have if a tornado comes in the middle? Of it? That's something that you know, have them sign on an iPad and we have them up there at the dispatch center that hey, a tornado hit here. I'm just throwing it out for. Discussion that that way, you know, because if, if the tornado went through a campground, um, yeah, how, how are we going to account for those people? But then it's the privacy too. We <laughs> sign it, say where they're at. I'm just just throwing it out there so that you know what you're getting in there. Ask around. I don't know if we have that capability yet or not. Well, just with so, the e one stuff, the privacy part of it, mm -hmm. because then it'd be like you're in a big. So if I go into Menards, do I got to sign in in case the tornado comes and they go into that building and it goes down? You know, it's my privacy to be where I want when I want to be. I get that. I'm just looking at it from, you know, they're camping, you know, how, how the kids do it. People camping at your place. So you know, just throwing it out. Yeah, there. I know what you mean, but I mean that with all this privacy stuff. Because then you can regulate on the pad and the temporary stuff. I'll ask around and see. How much? Some of us don't know how to turn an iPad on. Yeah. You know, if we had a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was looking at you, yeah. Doug. I knew there was two of us. <laughs> there are classes. Here's, here's what you're signing on when you come to mine and Doug's campgrounds. <laughs> what I mean, like the glass tornadoes in Kentucky, they got missing people and they don't even know if they're. Down wherever right. people are showing up a week later because they went to their grandma. Yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah, that is—is yeah. is, is there privacy issue there? Where I get I something know. every day on my phone. Your privacy, this and this and this. Yeah, how'd you get my number? How did you even get my number? Yeah. Yeah. So it isn't very private. But. I understand. Right. We've got. Um, one provision we want to change it and that to the camping unit, that's where we bring travel stores. Yep. We're gonna go a year from date of revocation, a year from date of revocation on the temporary campground. We're gonna clarify the parking space size. And that when we're talking about the two automobile stalls, and we're gonna clear up the text and that for the fire extinguisher and first aid kit also being available to the public. Adding ATCP 79, the provision yeah. 30, and removing provision 26. That which um, is basically and still waiting on the uh, whole one mile for public access. Yeah, the one mile might be a couple of days. That will yeah, that is. Going back to first provision. Well, they're pretty short lived, you know, on that. So I mean, it's like great. Like we get two or three yeah. of those. And are we going to leave number seven, miniature golf, or should we put that in a condition? You know, I'm fine with it being where it is. I'm just wondering how big they are. You know, I mean, I, I'm thinking. Uh, Z might cover that because it's got maximum building lot size, minimum landscape area, principal building, some of that. That would cover it. I'm gonna I kind of piggyback off of Doug's thought there of you know a year is just boom right now. So what if it was set up to be six months that you lost your license on the first revocation, not just because you know, so you didn't that first time you lost it for six months. But any time after that, it was a year. You know that you'd still lose right now today, but it wouldn't be a full year. You'd lose six months, but then 
any citation after that, it would be a, a year. So just a thought. Congratulations. What do we do with tourist rooming homes? Do they get a warning? So we can do a warning in a year. Same as the tourist rooming house. So they're both the same. Would that be better? I think. So they're kind of the same. But you only get one warning. Yeah, one warning. Because because I look at it as you know, like if you do the uh, temporary camp. I have people stay eight nights instead of seven. Can I do it this year? Oh, I say slap my finger. Yeah, you get it, and just it keeps going. Basically, the same except they're really careful. So, a big difference between a tourist temporary campground or a normal campground for that owner operated site, they should be noticed that for their actions. Versus a tourist rooming house, the reason why we put that clarity in there for the warning label um, and that was because the owner might not know that the renters were doing that activity or something so then they could be completely yeah yeah i'm just all i was thinking was off of yours was you give them a little break the, the first time around i don't makes no difference to me then the only other thing that we didn't really discuss was the uh for maximum of the seven night stick with that or what number that would be page two of four number seven right at the bottom of the green campground yeah you pay for six nights you get for seven nights yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell <laughs> most of the campgrounds i've been to have been that way so yeah we're right. getting late yeah. why don't you sing an ass that's good scientific research the yeah, eight tourism asked for like 24 24 24, 24 weekends. 24 weekends. Right. So that that, would be I mean, we can days. expect them to come back. I mean, when they talk to us, asking for. And see what this number does to it, if it works or not, maybe. But I mean, we got to start somewhere. So is seven a good number? Yeah. And yeah. Double my seven. Seven is Jason's example. At the hunting camp. Doesn't quite make it. It doesn't get you there. I was thinking the nine same thing. Yeah. So should be at least nine or ten days. Yeah. Because Nine days, hundred days, Friday. Yeah. Last day. Even, I mean, honestly, administratively, fourteen is still sure. And that twenty-four weeks is tough. And then, I mean, now you're talking chunk. Yeah. Um, and that, but I think even we we, we 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 administer the fourteen days all the time for the vacant lots. And then we drive out the next day. We come back two weeks later. Still we should keep it the same. Oh, so I, I would, I would say, I would say fourteen, because even then, when yeah. in theory, egg tourism comes back, it's still seven weekends. Yeah, you know, or whatever it is you want to do, yeah. it's still, it's still seven weekends. And there's some consistency. I think the, the tenth, the big tenth is fourteen days too. Yeah, right. yeah. So, I mean, you have consistency. That would be yeah. 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 They're all the same. That gets us through. Now we can be there on both a day on both sides of deer season. And a little yeah. muzzle loader. Yeah, and actually clean it up. Yeah. We can get two days of muzzle loader in too. Also, cover by group ten sites and fourteen days, not two weeks. Okay. Okay, so that's fourteen. Okay, that one. I was just want to see what else I had marked. So she went to Valpo area. That was a good one. Not two there. Fourteen days. Seven. Fourteen days added there. Okay. Number eight was a good one added. Okay. Number nine, we're gonna leave that forty to sixty. Sounds good. Fifteen foot separation. The quiet hours are the same. Uh, fifteen foot separation. That's already in our existing. That's in our existing. Yeah. yeah. And that's, so that's already been set. But the last sentence here, individual campsite, is pertaining to number eight. So that's going to have. Okay. You said we'd like to discuss it when we. Well, the quiet. Quiet time. The end of the tourist room and have us. Go there for all time. So, what's different? 
and, and they made me one o'clock because at 11 I had a campground. Is, okay, so is the blue every campground or is it a temporary campground? Blue is both. So that would be something that you could separate out and you could make it different. So let's say that you're okay with a temporary But maybe in a campground you say that. Yeah, because I don't know. I'm there. I'm going to agree with Doug. I don't think if you went past most campgrounds. They're up to past 11. Yeah. What what's the what's the regulation now for campgrounds? We don't yeah. have one. Okay. Or it's a, and did we get lots? To, did we get lots of complaints? Yeah. Well, then, Do we have to put them? Yeah. I'm just yeah. thinking of the tourist rooming house stuff and how they were partying all night out on East Falls or East Falls. This wouldn't apply to them, right? Yeah. This wouldn't yeah. apply to them, right? No. 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 But I think I think you, I think there's a bigger chance of them partying all night on a temporary campground than a full one. Than, yeah. than a full one because, yeah, I mean I'm fine with this on the, on the temporary side of things because I think that that cuts down that possibility of the tourist rooming house. It, it says that at eleven o'clock, boom, it's you know kind of lights well, out. So the to owner operators there too, though we got to remember on these campgrounds. Maybe they should control it more. If there's a complaint, the temporary campgrounds and well, both of them, the owner operators are going to be there. So maybe we can take it out. They can set their own. I just think there's a bigger chance that on a <clears throat> on a temporary one, because when I pull into Clam Falls Campground, I mean, I have all my neighbors all the time. Yeah, so we all know each other. Now I'm coming in with three units to a temporary one, and I think. That's why I would be willing to stick with, and I don't care if you want to call it 12 o'clock at night, but just a number to to keep that down. Because if even a temporary one, it still might only be 150 feet from the neighbor's house. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, and so, because I think on a regular campground, your neighbors are going to all be involved for the most part in whatever is going on. Where here, it's just it's in and out for the the night, the weekend, or whatever yeah. it is. And on a normal campground, you would have the ability to set quiet hours as your condition of use for the process. You know, whereas a temporary campground, you really won't have that ability. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm fine with it being in, in temporary campgrounds. Yeah. You know, um, separate it out, leave the other one. As a condition, they might have their own. Yeah, I, should, I would say, yeah, I would say cut, cut yeah. number 11 out of the blue, put it over in the green. Does it really matter? And I guess it is in the green. So I would leave it. It is not. And that the green, and that we've got our occupancy level in that. So, but we don't have the quiet. Oh, we don't actually have the quiet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, I would put them, I, to me, I'd leave the quiet hours the same as. When you can have the 15 people, you know, make sure that 11 o'clock from 11 at night to 7 in the morning, when there can only be 10 people there, that those are the quiet hours. Because you're making the five leave yeah. or, or the, the over anyway, the 10 yeah. leave at 11 anyway. I would just leave it out up to the owner and operator because if Brad's my neighbor <clears throat> and I got a rowdy group there, Brad's calling me for my. My business isn't going to flourish if I don't have any. Oh, yeah, well, because <laughs> unhappy Brad doesn't matter to you. <laughs> you know, if, if I don't so care what my neighbor thinks, it, so by, if by Kim is paying me enough, I don't care what you think. <laughs> the fireworks are still light off at midnight. <laughs> Yeah, I just I, I think there again on the temporary side, the, the odds of that become way less anyway. Yeah. Well, way way bigger of having problems. Yeah, dude, at that point they're like a tourist rooming house. Yeah, we're yeah. there for a yeah. couple of days. Yeah, we don't care. We don't. Yeah, once we leave, I don't I don't care if this guy loses his license or not. And they don't. 
in the door. <laughs> okay. So just put that one in the temporary one and not in the main one. Okay. Um, Campers. That's pretty much all the stuff. So on 25, Jason, in the blue on the back, 50 feet from the lot line, is that like, so if we're on a on a county road, is that 50 feet from the 37 foot setback? You know, 50 feet from the lot line. So if they own to the center of the road, or it's a piece of county. They could, be, they could be right up next to the 5 feet, 12 or 13 feet away from the, and on a state road, they'd be right on State road owns most of the right of way, you know, and that's so all they would okay. be, yeah. So along like but on a on a on a county road, then they if they yeah. own to the center or on a town road, they it's pretty cool. Still is, so is that is that enough along the road? There again, I don't yeah. care. I'm just saying is is that enough? Well, one thing about it, they have to provide screening requirements and that like a mobile home park. And so whether they put it for screening, it's either going to be a private entrance or a tree line or whatever. So as far as view, it should be okay. You know? But whether or not you want that close. Safety yeah, I, there again, I don't care. I'm just. You heat the dust. You heat the dust. You keep worse camp safe than it's been. Again, 20 feet off the road, yeah. But, but, but the density, this but the is, density this is they should time ones too. Yeah, but the density should move that way. Yeah. Because it's going to be hard to have somebody. There's your site. It looks like it's on the road. Because you're going to acres, we're going to take a fifty foot setback all the way around. All the way around. And that and subtract that from the total acreage. And so then calculate your total. Yeah. yeah. So it gets down fast. Yeah. And then we're going to subtract out the swamp. The distance. Yeah, so it'll should be pretty well. I'm asking kind of a question that's off topic, but before we get to the CAFO stuff, um, you know, we had that um, miracle at Rock Creek was this year, and did we have any issues? Did that go smooth? And I mean, I read good things about it. People seemed real happy with it. So if we actually pass this then down the road, all of these would be in each spot, right? Instead of like your theory earlier of you know what's here and what's there. When it showed up on our website, they'd all be under temporary and all under permanent campgrounds or not in the ordinance itself. I mean, I mean that's kind of what I was trying to get at, so it wasn't too confusing. But then you get you know same text yeah i was just trying to from from confusion when i'm looking at it and saying but but i'll get when i get the permit i'll get a copy of what i can do anyway so with those changes that then we this this will need a public hearing yeah of course let's hold off on it and let's hold off a little bit with the condo give you guys very much notice you can look at it think about it you know and that hopefully Talk about our other amendments coming forward, then we can bundle it all together. Some of this you said was kind of tied to that too. Yeah, this is some division will be in yeah. there too. So we the have the time. We use this kind of yeah. So when we go into a public hearing, it'll just be one big one. Yeah. Just go down through everything. Yeah. 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 And reference back to subdivision and everything. Okay. Can I ask one other question? Now, yeah. right now, I mean, we're talking, this is recreational business and, and commercial. So why would, why wouldn't the tourist rooming house fall into? <clears throat> Good question. And that, so that's only, put that in there because it's only for the campground provisions, not the temporary campground provisions. The temporary campground would be available RA5, egg, 10, egg, so on. Those would be the only three. I just put it in there just so that you kind of got a clue of what might be coming in that, that we're looking at switching it over to the conditional use. So, yeah, 
Yeah, it's not in order, I guess. That way. Yeah. In order, it's all the, the actual ordinance is laid out, but it's not in order. It'll make more sense. If it's just in order. Yeah, not highlighted this way. Okay. Cool. Well, at your guys' December 21st going board meeting, uh, we had proposed a couple maps and then with our capable presentation. And the maps that we did not move the public domain properties and that from it. So Brad, our GIS guy, uh, was kind enough and that they can move that. So here is the updated, you'll see a lot more red and then and Sterling plant balls and Lorraine before the county board did any changes. Now you can see the public domain lands and that with the ash and the diagonal um, after we included those. So it really reduces your early late county. Oh, it, it did add a lot more red to it. Oh, it did. I mean, when you look, the skirling was almost all green. Yeah. Well, and it's the whole west half of Sterling. Yeah. Give you a little heads up. Bob and I are both going to the Thomas Sterling Town Board meeting on the 17th. Um, I took it and kind of came up with a preliminary zoning map for the town of Sterling. Uh, Brad is working on it and we're going to present a potential zoning map to him and that this is at the request of the town chair um, and they're going to look at their options in that for adopting their own zoning or adopting county I don't know if they'll adopt or not, but anyway, we're going to go over all the options, whether that they want to create their own ordinances, nobody's going to do it, so we're just going to be there for kind of communication and that guy. Perfect. As today, they're just done so? That was there. Somebody served. Yeah. But, I mean, this, the CAFO issue came, but then what if it's... Uh... Something else. Anything else, yeah. a factory or a tire storage, a, a huge junkyard or whatever. I mean, you can't, they can still go into any on zone spot. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Really? It's going right on the east west portion there. Cushing will soon be the largest <coughs> city in Poole County. <laughs> We're not looking to expand. <laughs> Cushing, I think, is looking to expand. If you join forces, Jason would only have to go to one meeting then. <laughs> I'll, be fine. I'll be there with him and Bob more than likely. I'm going to listen. Uh, but yeah, I know they, they came maybe, in. Maybe they'll give such a good presentation, we'll invite you to clam polls too. <laughs> He probably, he was probably won't get back out. But yeah. he said there's still too much green. They do. They still. They still feel there's too much open area. So, but even for some of that stuff, I mean, even there, you get 2,000 acres that you can spread. Open out. open land doesn't mean that it's farmland. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just because it's green. I mean, yeah. I look at clam poles and think there's a lot of green in clam poles. Or, you couldn't mm -hmm. find that many acres of farmland in Clam No, correct. No, that you know, you drive around up there. No, it isn't. They correct. think them are green all fields out take. there. They're not. Yeah. But, but, but all they take is the four acres. You know, around that biggest thing that probably is most cost prohibitive. Yeah, you, you got to have, I mean, easy to can, call in people. You can put it on a 40, but you still got to have 1,500 acres to get rid of it. 15 is the minimum, yeah, just about. So, you know, so that's hard to find right now, anyway. Okay. We're going to raise it this spring. I'm sure there's a lot of farmers that will be glad to take them. Oh, well, yeah. Sure. 
if you can find round up. Uh, it's on a ship in uh, United Egg out of South Georgia. Wow. Why? Why? What's causing that? Uh, he said potash is really bad too, but it sounds like there's two plants up in Canada somehow, and potash is a natural rock. It sounds like potash mines are. Oh. And something went wrong with those plants, or they got shut down. I don't know, but um, it was tremendous in depth. Oh. Trade trade wars between the north. Yeah, they did a cost analysis on our turkey manure, and our turkey manure right now is worth it. It puts more barn up in it. You can give the turkeys away and just want them to have the manure. <laughs> and feed them more. Go out right. there and squeeze them with them every day. <laughs> Turkey feels <laughs> pretty bad. Pretty bad. Okay, thanks, Jason. Yeah. Thank you. So maybe on the next meeting, maybe I'll we'll have something for you on those condo. The condo on that. that, and then we'll we'll probably put uh, these back on there because then we've all looked at them once to we'll get a little more. Yeah. I'm hoping to have at least and then start that maybe we can go through like half of stuff. Yeah, because there is going to be. Well, oh, sure. Good to have this too, just for when we cross reference, yep. you know, to the other stuff to yeah. and keep it together. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We want a short break before we look at the rules of order, our part of it. Let's just take a short break at five or so. Yeah. Still be out.
my grandson and <laughs> no, it's a family no, thing. Don't no. worry, we're going back to parks and not only did you have to go back to parks. We're gonna have a playground story before we leave today. Brad, you are with me this year. <laughs> oh yeah, you wait till the story gets done and you're gonna be going, are you kidding me? Yep. Probably told him to destroy it. <laughs> Are we on yet, Bob? Yes, sir. Are we on? <laughs> do you have this Malia? Are you gonna send? Let's just do this quick because we missed that during update. Let's put our letter up that we got from the DNR. Oh, I don't have that at the moment. I just emailed it to you, Bob. Um it's I not a have letter to log into my oh you don't oh you can't do it. In there? This is the clerk's account. No, I it's the county board account. Your email address associated with that? Lori said we were going to see it. I was now everybody was. She said it's all. Well, I, I mean, I was going to answer it for, her, but I thought I didn't want to get her too much. Log on to the, the generic log on. There's, there's no email address associated. So we might have to wait till next time to do this. Oh, Kim, you psyched oh, us right now. Oh, I got you psyched because it's a what good lift. What a Motion for us. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That's, all, that's all we can Should I send you the survey link? It's a customer satisfaction survey. At the end of her letter, I was going to answer she because that's it. Everybody, had, I everybody got it. I never saw it. From the DNR, you didn't get it? When did we get it? When did we get it? Uh, middle of last week. We got it during the last environmental services, <laughs> not the last one. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Oh. oh. Who did I forward it to? Hold on. I got Hold it. <laughs> Or did I get it direct from the DNR? Because no, I it. Didn't get it. Did you get it? It came from you, Malia, right? I copied. Copied me for oh. sure. I read it and I and I. I copied. Off and then I was going to answer. Bob, it. Vince, Chad, Mo. And me. Did I didn't get it. I don't know how you got it. What? I'm in the know. I probably got it right from the no. news. He probably he probably hacked into your computer. Yeah, I had his computer. Computer. I can't even turn my phone on. Was right was it sent to him and your him? name was on the left? Yeah. Oh, I that's what I got it right from the news. I no, this is just it. an email. I'll email. read it. How about I'll, I'll read the email? It's short. Read it, but I wanted to answer it today. <laughs> well, we can, I can do it and then say the questions. Yeah, that would work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, because yeah, Kim just wants to blow the hat off. I am so ready to go. Go blow it. Let's go. Attorney Malone, the department has received your request for a copy of the department's previous comments on Polk County's plan for the Cattail State Trail. The DNR has not reviewed or provided comments to Polk County regarding the county's plan since Mr. Berge wrote the letter dated December 17, 2018. Mr. Berge has since left the department and the time the department and the time the department has spent on matters related to Polk County in the last three years has been focused on the Stour Seven Lake State Trail. As you requested, the department confirms receipt of the county submission to the department of a revised draft plan for the Cattail Trail. You also requested that the department provide next steps and an estimated time frame for the department to complete its review of the county's re revised draft Cattail Plan. Our relationship with respect to the Cattail Trail is governed by the MOU between the county and the department and also a cooperative trail easement. The department does not review and approve the county's plan under the terms of the MOU. Accordingly, the department will not provide the county with next steps or a time frame for the department well, to review the revised Cattail Plan. If the department determines that an action taken by the county is inconsistent with the terms of the MOU, such that the termination may be warranted by the department, in other words, termination of the MOU, warranted by the department, the department will communicate that to Polk County as required by the terms of the MOU. Thank you for providing the revised draft plan for the Cattail Trail to the department. So that was their email to me, and there's a survey at the a bottom. So it's not approved, disapproved. But my, rep my reply, and this was sent December 15th, Mr. Schmelzer, thank you for your response. Based upon your statement that the DNR has no plans to take any action on the revised plan, I presume that the WDNR has determined 
that the submission complies with the cattail MOU. If that assumption is incorrect, please point out what deficiencies with compliance still exist from the DNR's perspective. Thank you in advance for your continued partnership. I received no response to my email. Well, that means it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he had the sure. MOU, which I have in my little briefcase here, <laughs> supposed to meet with this once a year and update any needs in excess. And then in chapter 44, that they shove down our throat, that they will review and do all these things. They haven't done any in three years, and their excuse is the guy left. Now their excuse is COVID. Well, he left. It's 2018. The COVID wasn't even around yet. Yeah. Three years ago. So then. So, so here we sit three years later and they go, oh, because we're fighting with the Stour. They haven't done anything on the Stour either. We have that in court. They didn't do anything. They won't take it to court. So what have they done? Absolutely no, zero. Isn't that great? I mean, I've got the MOU says that we have to meet once a year and, and discuss these plans. So read the survey. Please we might answer it. A lawyer might answer this survey. <laughs> enter the name of Or I will go home and do it if you want. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> That's you I'm can getting... give the answer. She'll type it in. But maybe. I don't know what she'll be typing. That's what I mean. That's... So at first we would have to identify who the staff member is. So that would be Mr. Knoll. What the purpose was for the communication. Yep. Did the DNR member respond in a timely manner? Absolutely no. Um, how long did it take for the DNR staff member to respond? More than five business days is the longest we can. And then add three years. Well, there's no comment. It's just well, the same day, two business fit, days, three, fit four, it. five or more. Five or more. Um, choose your level of agreement or disagreement with the following statement. Uh, was he courteous? Yes, that's, that's a big deal. Wrongly agreed? Oh, he's no. just courteous. That's I could care less which way. <laughs> was he attentive? No. Was he knowledgeable? No. Did he communicate in an understandable way? No. I mean, you understand the words. No, I think you I understand that he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything, but he didn't do understand. I guess I understand that they were doing nothing. nothing. Was the helpful? No. no. How satisfied are we with the outcome? Very satisfied, satisfied, neutral, dissatisfied, or very dissatisfied? Very dissatisfied. How satisfied were you with the customer service? Very dissatisfied. Very dissatisfied. Please feel free to provide any additional comments. Whoa. Whoa. We'd like to be contacted by the supervisor. Yes. Right. Three years, chapter 44, MOU. Can you at least read it if you're going to shove it down our throats? What I'm going to do. You is have to do it politically correct. Politically I did. Correct. So that's why if I would have answered it, it would have been a little. I didn't even notice there was a survey. Oh, I did. You put Kim's number down as the contact for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said right. if I would have answered, I got that far, and all of a sudden it's in comments, and I started putting some in there, and I went, oh. Because this came in her name, I better, I better <laughs> go back and delete some of this stuff. Is that unbelievable in three years? Unbelievable. Isn't it four three years, years, actually? Well, be four. No, no, it's the the DNR, there's nothing that's unbelievable. Oh, no, but we bought a dam and they're there tomorrow. Yeah. Boom. Priority. Right. Land versus Clam water. Clam Stamp, and they're there just like that. If it's anything else, we're okay. Isn't it tomorrow at 10? Yeah. Is the damn tomorrow at I 10 said, tomorrow, Kim? God, what do I got going to? I might. Oh. The people at that? Clam Falls are so polarizing. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Because otherwise, they send you through all the departments. No, that isn't ours. Go to Park Rec. Go to here. Go to Plant. Go to here. Oh, we never heard of that. We never even heard of that trip. State trails, and you haven't heard of it? Come on, give me a break, people. And if you're gonna lie to me, lie good. Well, Leo, when you get the next one, forward it to me so that I will answer the next. I mean, they it might never happen. That last one, I, I can send a follow up and just say I'm just following up on that last one. Yes, you almost got to give them some type, sort of timeline to respond <laughs> because if you just leave it open, it's, it's, he was on vacation for three weeks. 
go. He retired and left. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been replaced him before. Yeah, replaced that guy. So he left in 2018 when you sent it in. So he took a little bit. I'll have to see where he retired. Call him first. So, so he's got a private consulting. Yeah. God, I just read that like uh, unbelievable. All right, let's jump into rules of order that uh, uh, for our committee. Here we go. Thanks, guys. Now you know. Thank you, Malia. Yeah, thank Malia. It's in her name. Let's see. <laughs> Bob, you did have some marks on this that you. Right, we worked together on that, Kim. Um, yeah. At the December uh, executive committee meeting, they asked the standing committee to review the uh, rules of order and provide recommendations to back to the executive committee for the January 13th meeting. So I think what we've been tasked to do is to just look at our this yeah. governing committee's provisions within the rules of order. And you and I kind of highlighted some things. I know starting on page seven, which is defining the five standing committees. Um, we looked at number two, and this applies to Justin as well, of course. Yep. Historically, the FSA chairperson, why they're on this committee is part of the LCC, the Land Conservation Committee. That's the precursor to this governing committee. And uh, it always FSA agents or elected official um, was really here to uh, work with land conservation, oversee the extension service as well as any agricultural issues. And that's what those voting rights were. Just historically, yeah. yeah. So, but, um, you know, if we take- Justin's been partaking in all you know, kinds of land use decisions. Yeah. And, so we'll have to kind of decide if, if that's still gonna go, because now we take ag tourism, oh, we can't vote on the campground. <laughs> and am I, am I no. nice? No, but- but you can't unless you couldn't vote on uh, what am I zoning, uh, change. zoning changes, any of that zoning district changes, unless it's ag to something. Bob had a good thing for LIDAR. Or LIDAR. Uh, and tourist rooming house, uh, conditional use permits, he couldn't vote on either. You know, and in a way, I mean, that protects that person. I mean, yeah. as you know, when you get into some contentious topics, yeah. and so. The FSA agent is excused from that. That protects that you protects know. you, like the trails that you couldn't put on stuff. But then there would be a substantial amount of the meeting that right. was spectator. Yes, yeah. right. historically that's been the case. Right, that's, so that's, clarifying what the intent is. Yeah. Yeah, but worse on the trail, you can vote. I mean, again, how you define what is ag related is very, can be very broad. But yeah. But, it, but the, then the question would be. Let's say he was a tie-breaking vote, for example, and somebody was wanted to fight it, and they go, "Well, in your rules of order, he should have voted on that." And then we're in litigation because it's a CUP, right. and so being as clear as possible, uh, you know, if the intent is to allow everything, then then make it clear and or make sure that that's, okay. not, that's all. So not being the, you know, you could say it uh, is elected within, within a point. his or her discretion. So if he believes there's an ag-related element, he can he can vote as long as you're clear in the rules of order that he would he or she would be exercising their discretion as to whether or not they believe this okay. vote was ag-related. Then you, you I'd be okay clear. with that. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. I mean, yeah. You know, there isn't too many times where you know his vote would cause a three to three tie. No, but it, again, if it did, that it if it did, or if, if you had less than a normal full vote, and there were, let's say only four three showed up, and, yeah, 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 okay, because he counts as a quorum. So if it was just us three that showed up today, we'd all he he would make me and Kim a quorum, yeah, right. But you'd only be able to vote on can't vote an issue, right? That's such a Boy, we can get three people not to come. Shit would really fly. <laughs> Shit hit me. 
<laughs> We'd have been done at nine o'clock. <laughs> the laughter. But uh, is there a different way to word that? Do you think then that that he we would have it their discretion a little bit to protect him? Seven. The way it's written now, I mean, you could kind of covered. You could say ag related issues. Ag related, okay. <laughs> the rest the same i mean well, here we go. Okay. Yeah. matters concerning land conservation ag and extension education well, agricultural extension because the egg and the extension. other agents are in another yeah so the ag agent could be added and then if you want to define agriculture a little bit more that's an opportunity too. so to, to some degree i'm just throwing this out there what would be the point of coming if it's only the if there was nothing uh that's uh who was before you Lyle. 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 there was times he didn't come because there was nothing so he didn't show up to the meeting I'm, I'm just, just asking i'm not i'm not trying to i'm just just yeah, asking, yeah. You know, definitely if you got to sit through a whole meeting and you can't do anything right what, what's the use of coming so you could look at the agenda possibly well, well, I, I'm if there's nothing ag related, you wouldn't have to come to that. Meeting. Could he still add his opinion or suggest well, that? That's where my next question that was, can I debate if yeah. I can't? So, so, really, the question is what is the purpose? Is the purpose yeah. to have representative from ag who is neutral, in other words, not subject to the whim of the public voting him or her out of the position? So, they're they're politically insulated, but then you have a ag voice at the table so that they can determine whether or not whatever is being discussed has any impact on ag. Because uh, you could you could argue that everything has an impact on everything. So on everything. Purpose, I mean, yeah, if the purpose is to have the voice and have that insulated political apolitical voice representing ag here with a voting right, then maybe you do open it up. If the purpose is just for those limited things, so but could know. he so back back to his last comment? Could he be limited in theory to voting on Discussion. what's on the sheet of paper, but still be open to debate, to debate no. because because even though the paper doesn't say it's agricultural related, he, it, he or it she could might. be agriculture related because. You could make an argument that campgrounds are agriculturally yeah. related because it's going to take up agricultural land. Right. Yeah. You know, so I and, and I don't know, but I mean, I think the closest win win would be to say is here, you can vote on these things, whatever is here, maybe, and maybe expanded, but you can debate right. whatever we're at, whatever, whatever we're on, even if you, you know, you can try to change my mind. Or at least. At least to say, here's how it does relate to A. Yeah. Even though we think it might not, he might say, yes, it does. Yeah. You know, yeah, because I think, like the I think, grounds, he can say I think your ability, the, the, the FSA re representative's ability to debate on maybe 99%, what can they? Yeah. Yes, is, is as important as anything so that they get a voice because they're again campgrounds. They're not really AG, but they are, well, you know, take 10 or 20. Yeah. 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 They yeah. Rezone the egg. So it's, it's really, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there is ways that that's right. So I think if we so, could, if we could find that. Middle ground, so to speak, wherever, wherever that is to say that. I think we'd have to try to find something that is just absolutely no egg at all. To say you can't vote. We'd have to really sit and go. Maybe there something. would almost have to be a vote to exclude. So, if like people, if the committee thought this is just clearly not ag related, I don't know that that would. Because then it gets yeah. into oh, this, I know I was going to vote. And so I'm going to yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh definitely. Sure. sure. And then you go back to the quorum thing. If there's only three of us here, and you make you the quorum. Two voting people. Yeah. You can have a split vote. Nobody and, wins. And technically, does the chairman vote in that situation anyway? Break the tie, sure. Break the tie. So realistically, or make we would tie. not have a three-three tie. No, on some sense, no. 
you know, most of our stuff is to just to move to the board. I mean, a lot of it is, yeah. is to move up, but like conditional use and that stuff. Uh, well, rezoning, you would be involved because that's if you're rezoning it. Residential or ag or, 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 or from ag is usually most of them. So, yeah, so more, almost all of those. Uh, I'm trying to think what you wouldn't be able to vote on. Nearly all the land and water, because again, the, land, all the land and water, and water department water. is governed by the LCC. Yes, which is the precursor of this. So that's the stormwater so stuff. It's all that. So so you know, agriculture. You know, the reason FSA points someone to this committee is because of you have extension. This is another reason because, yeah. like FSA, which is a federal program. You have extension, 10% of their funding comes from the feds as well. Yeah. And so that's to provide that oversight to the extension service. So I'm just bringing up the history. Yeah. What the evolution, why we are where we're at now. So, I think he both. That's what I, I, that's I think. Yeah, too. because he. Unless we can absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's value, value, whether it was Lyle or you. It's going to be hard. value. And I think it's we. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if nothing else, the, the discussion has to stay, even if we're going to say you can only vote on these things, because you otherwise, you know, everything anyway. Well, it is. <laughs> well, it would, yeah. And then we'll spend more time deciding what he can vote on. Well, whether Just he can vote or not, not get anything the, done. Yeah. He's part of Environmental Services Committee, he or she or whoever it is. I, I think they'd be treated as. as and if it makes it a tie vote, we got to work harder. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. I don't know. That's so we have the ability to change that. Oh gosh! Well, we right. got the ability to the, the next county board to define the rules of order. You know, we yeah. we can define this better, whatever, whatever you think defining better is. Uh, it's right now you vote. Right? He votes. Yeah, he votes. Yeah. yeah. But we're trying to think what is that egg that he voted on. Yeah, I mean, un unless you were uh, find something that is unless not you were a. zoning from commercial to industrial, and that's that would be about know, something. Um, unless we, I, I think we would leave it like it is, and then if we did find something, he'd recuse himself. I mean, he, you know, but that person should recuse himself if not egg related. Do we put that in there? That's a would that help? Then you're again granting that person the discretion to determine whether or yeah. not when. Well, we would help them make that decision. Make that. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be at the discretion of the chair. They would, as a chair, you would help them recuse himself. You, you would suggest. Yeah, yeah that. we all might trust you as the chair, but what if there comes a tyrant chair who says, no, you can't vote on it? Doug, would you do that to him? I want the chair. <laughs> I say just let him vote. Did he a member of the Did I see resignation, Doug? <laughs> Scared? Of, I got You got to do it. <laughs> no, but I mean, if that was in there and they didn't recuse themselves, I mean, it would kind of it would fall in that on that person. But it's the same as number five that we have. Are we really going to get that technical? I don't know why that came up, but it did. Somebody said that they're not voted in, so he shouldn't be able to vote. That okay. came up at the first meeting I was at. Yes. And we said that it's mm -hmm. angry. With it. But if you notice on every agenda, we have number, what is it on here? It's the number five. So if you have a conscious conflict, conflict, of, conflict interest. of interest, or anything, it's the same difference. Yeah. yeah. I think so. That but number five should cover. Number, number five actually covers him. It covers him too. Yeah. yeah. And he can say, I don't think this is. Ag related because it is going from commercial to industrial. Yeah. You know, a, a zoning yeah. issue like that. But I mean, I think, I think and that covers all of us that way. There's going to be less times that this is going to happen than more. So I think we just then just leave it with number five. Yes. Yeah. He's actually considered yeah. a member of our field. And yeah. if you have a. I mean, this. Yeah, if he does his, not have his an egg related interest. Realistically, his conflict would be that it's not egg related. Yeah. Yeah. Would be as, as far as voting. Making a mountain of money. We are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. 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 I, I would, that's why I said I couldn't find an example. 
No, the board could vote on that. There is, not that there isn't a thing to vote on, but has there yeah. any bit? Anyone ever come in to contest to be voted on? No. And there again, has he ever been? Is this, you know, not just him, but any FSA no, have they ever been the deciding vote? Yeah, yeah, for forever. Have they ever been the, you know? Look at we took his dad, we straightened him out. You can tell him that. <laughs> you can tell him that. <laughs> I mean, I only voted with Brad against everybody else once. So, uh, <laughs> if we could have just got one yeah, more of them, Bobby, we had that tie gotcha. I think we can leave it alone. I think we should leave it alone yeah. with that number five. Yeah. For now. Unless somebody really comes up. So whatever. I have a question about that then. So, regarding the, when they're approving the agenda, the minutes that at the beginning is only like Justin and two other members. Did you get to vote on that? Yes. Fine. Well, that's as it's the starting of the meeting. He's not voting for any subsequent thing or something. You know, he isn't voting. You know, anything odd. Yeah. I mean, he isn't voting to say move this forward, move a, a change anything, change an ordinance or anything. That's just part of a procedural for the meeting itself to keep it going. The right. that part, isn't it? I'm trying to fumble through yeah. this without my. Robert's rules for dummies to read here. Yeah, so he would be just part of the meeting to get it started and keep it going. Then if there's substance, that if it was completely non-ag related, then he could. Which with Zoom and everything, now we'll always have at least three out of the thing. But but that is a question. So if there was only if it was me and two other people, huh. there'd be one person voting for that item. If it was non ag Later. It'd be two. There'd no. still be two. Well, there'd be a chairman, but then you got a tie vote. And if you had a tie vote, it failed. Then yeah. you move on. Just like any other one. If you have a quorum and it's and it's only three and it's one to one, and one to realistically, two, the way we're set up, even if we have a three to three vote on a resolution or a tie, is it one to one? Yeah. And and you don't vote, it still goes to the council. It still board. goes. It still moves forward. You know, so resolution wise, it's going to the county board yeah. and we vote. Five to five to nothing or six to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So most of the stuff will move on pretty much anyway. It's just our recommendation is yes or no. Yeah. So so It'd most be of more stuff. so on a conditional use. On a conditional use or something. You know, something. But yeah. But yeah, no, I I think I think we stay where we're at. See, we're at use that that number five to kind of cover us for that. You know, conflict of interest. So okay. Page nine, this is something you you pointed out, Cam, number 14. Only county employees or supervisors may distribute literature or handouts. Materials presented by persons speaking during public comment will, comment will be received by the clerk. I, I don't think this is a big deal. We have had handouts from the public. This is something you brought. It's on 14 there? Yeah. That was, because that was there before, too. We had handouts. People hand it out. They get excited. Right. I mean, do we take that out of there or leave it in or just? Well, if they do have handouts, they have to disseminate it. They can stay in there so that nothing else, the clerk at least gets it. Gets, well, gets a, copy. Gets, gets a copy. I mean, you know, it's never been an, I'll say an issue, but at the same point, we don't need 20 people in here handing stuff out to us, right. um, you know, on an, on an issue. I mean, I think. You know, if one person comes in today and says, can I give you this piece of paper? I don't know that it's a big deal if we have, you know, at times when we've got, you know, a half an hour of public comment. If those 10 or 15 people all wanted to give us. Six pages, you know, I think that becomes the difference. So it's if it's kind of a control thing, because I mean, if people come in, you get all these papers on your desk yeah. then the question becomes. Where did this come from? Is yeah. it legitimate? Is yeah. it has yeah. it been vetted? Yeah. Has it been given to the clerk? And is it going to be a public record? So it kind of makes sense to just keep the procedure in there to go through the clerk. Oh, yeah. But most of this is for the county board because this was all standing committees and full board. This it's is more the, for the full board that we were getting blasted as we came in and stuff. Yeah. Which is a great segue to this governing committee, which yep. is page. And, and again, a lot of this is just housekeeping. We're just yeah. cleaning it up. We're trying to clean some of this up. So B1, 
um, this is this is um, I guess pretty significant um, change. Notice all the departments under um, the environmental services oversight. You still have parks, as you all know. The parks department is moved over to the public safety, public highway yep. division. Um, however, we're still responsible for recreational planning, particularly with our trails and parks. So perhaps, and this is you know value to Mo, because as you know, every governing committee is going through this. Um, is this an opportunity for the next board? Clean up the Roberts Rules of Order, remove parks, move it over to there, and yet still retain the uh, planning function for recreation. Because our committee is the planning committee. It's the plan commission, yeah. Or you put yeah, the count yeah. the personnel that do that. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's our legal deal that in the LLC where we're with that also. And I, is that listed kind of in here? We're listed as both. Should be. Land information, you know, we're LCC, uh, that LLC work, but that's part of our thing. Number number five is the planning part. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's free. Yeah, it's number, number three. three, so it's in. Okay. 90, yeah. 90 but the extension so. those. So extension, we would have to just wordsmith that and just apply the agricultural agent. The ag right. agents. Okay. Which we got on your company. And then if you're amenable to it, or I mean, you could strike parks and expand upon recreation, include recreational planning for parks and trails. Yeah. That, oh, way, that way, all those yeah. conceptual, the, the free project instruction concepts would still be vetted through this. Yeah. So, but wouldn't that not parks? I'm not just saying stay here, but stay here to that extent because we're going to plan the park. We don't know anything about the park beforehand because public safety and highway has it. How do we plan for it? They would bring we're that planning. Forward. Let's say we're we're planning to do something at the Summers Lake Park, but we don't know what they're doing and what Doug does He's on the committee, but. You know what I'm saying is, is it's at two committees and neither committee knows what the other one's doing, so to speak. Because right. they're overseeing the park, but we're planning about it. That's another alternative we could. I mean, I just we could I just see that all recreational related items to that governance committee and have it housed there. We would report to that committee. That was okay, let's clean bring it back. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm just it suggesting would, that we come can, back to us. Just getting off that. Let's land it. Bring parks back. Yeah, now. bring parks back. Because the Ben runs trails and the parks. But he's no longer in this division. He's in. No, I know, but yeah. he, but he that's that's that unit, you know. And then Rod Polk runs the the, uh, the parks. Got to get this all straight. <laughs> But so they're they're different. So if you're going to do Summers Lake, it would still go through Rod Polk, I think, because he's in charge of that. It's still come here for planning here. They, they yeah. did that. Yeah. yeah, but all I'm saying is, is that we're the planning end of the park. But you're then at that point, the highway is is the overseer of the park. The implementation. The implementation. Yeah, the implementation. So. I'm just, are they never going to talk about that in public safety and highway? The expansion of the Summers Lake Park or this park or that park, we're just going to implement what environmental services says. So they would make a suggestion to us what they need. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's, it would go that way. Communication is still there. I mean, Bob and Mo, that's yeah. part of their job description is to communicate. Think of it in terms of Mo or Bob. I can't, you know, you get into the departments all screwy, but um, if if Mo is the person that has crews out in the parks and the trails every day, who's maintaining it and hearing most of the feedback, so to speak, that works up to Mo, who communicates with Bob and to me, that says, do we want to change something? 
here. Here are some things that are happening, or here are some opportunities. We need a bathroom here. We need a parking lot. Right. Or something like that. Or when it comes to planning. If this committee says, you know, I think we also need a, a kite flying park or a dog park or something like that, that would be something that Bob would probably take the lead on and say, how do we plan for that? Talk with Mo and say, is there a facility on our property? So I, I think all we're doing is since Mo is the one who, who is in charge of maintaining, driving our park. We're, we're shifting at letting him stay with that division. We're so he's not here part. every meeting with the parks and trails update. Yeah. That would be for public safety, public works. Bob, on the other hand, will be coming here talking about here's here's the future, here's what we're planning, changing. Once you all agree to it, then we say how do we implement it? That's still under the PTA. We got those other 13. Yeah. So we still plan those and we decide whether to implement them. He has to implement it. We push it to him now. Right. But they can come up with an idea and say all of a sudden Ward Lake needs a big this or that for remote planning. Then you would bring it back to us for planning. Ultimately, we're still supposed to. Yeah. yeah. You know, keep it going. It yeah, no, I, and I'm fine with it going. I just want to make sure that it stays in a circle, can I say? You know, so that yeah. I mean, you're not, you know, both committees aren't planning something or. Working on the same thing, getting up. You're working on the same thing, going in opposite directions. Yeah. And part of that, I think, Mo is sitting at both meetings. He says, well, they're working on this and this. But I mean, it all gets yeah. worked together because yeah. you've got the same. Yeah, as long as we have doing the updates and stuff, we're, we're sitting there. Yeah. And one of the things we try to do in this form of government is we send out an agenda doesn't just come to this committee and me, it comes to this committee, me, and all the directors. So that if we're trying to catch, is there anything, you know, Tanya will call me and say, hey, you're doing this, should I be at that meeting? We try to do it that way. We, what I'm trying to avoid too, is we're trying to avoid having all of our directors come to all of the committee meetings. Oh, so they can't sure. do yeah. their job. Yeah. So, it's really inefficient for us to go to every governing Sure. So we really do rely on our internal communication. <coughs> I was surprised when I just, it was an option to take parks away. I didn't really mean, you know, the oversight of parks. I really, I just meant the the, the operation and maintenance and building things. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm, um, and I'm fine with that's just that yeah, portion of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just, there again, I don't want us both working on the same issue. You want to go north, and we want to go south. <laughs> you know, up, you know, there is another way to look at it. Is there up and down? <laughs> it's ten to twelve. Yeah, we our start at two o'clock, and we're usually done by two thirty. Yeah. So yeah. we could we could probably use a little more things to work on. You know yeah. what? Maybe That's I should stop hard. into one of your meetings. <laughs> I was here. Saying, I was I, here yesterday, and I should have walked in then. It would have took you longer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you do need so, more work on. It's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, most of the other governing committees don't right. have, well, obviously they don't have two meetings a month and they're not here to noon twice a month. Yeah. So there's that. Um, our workload is much greater. Granted, we make more decisions. It's a but different see, they get I think the taxpayer is getting a way bigger bang for their buck. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. <laughs> But, right. but now, <laughs> but if they start doing them policies and stuff, the, the general government might have a little work to do. Busy work. They might have to actually go through a piece of paper line for line. And so would, so. <laughs> would then parks disappears from here. So is Mo going to show up for recreational trails and dams, or is Bob going to do that? Bob could do it if we yep. need. If we need Bob, but they will come together yeah. when they need to. Right, but it would so. I would do it so we get of, we get rid of parks and then I don't mean this in a bad way we get rid of Mo too. Well, Mo wouldn't have sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes you yeah, would physically have to be here as much. Yeah, right. is what we're looking at. Okay. Yeah, we could take that burden of reporting. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. It's really just a lot of housekeeping in our rules of order. Right. 
because the way we've been functioning so far has worked. We communicate quite often. We're staying on task. We're just trying to keep you guys updated on what we're doing. And when there's a decision point, you know, Mo might need to be here. Like when the RFPs come, he'll come go through it with us and then we'll move on. You know, so he will come for that stuff, I think. Yeah. Anytime something gets planned, we, we loop in Mo because Mo has that hands on experience of can't drive a bulldozer this way. Yeah. Okay, so what else on ours? Uh, at number 11, set the line price. Of course, that'll be deleted. Number 11. It's 11. No, number 11. Number Page 11. 11. Number oh, 11. Kim, yeah. there's a couple. Um, Is there some more up there? Well, there's yeah. those outside agencies that have been moved, so. Yeah. Outside agencies, I got West Cap, RPC, yep. um, extension. We have Please. agents only in that. Yep. One. yep. Seven head egg there, the University Egg Extension Program. You want to put both the dairy advisory and person there? I think we'll leave it just as kind of, they'll fit under it. It's a program area. I mean, they got four program areas and agriculture's covers them. SARS. I think that's what I had marked in some of those general for everything. Change it whenever two, if it isn't working, say the park once gets to whatever we can update that too. Are we good there? Okay. So let's do our uh, resolution that we're going to move forward. Is that next? Yes. <clears throat> so that all resolution. Yeah. All this is an updated version of the resolution 1415. County passed in 2015. Um, some numbers have been changed because more counties have jumped on, and it simply asks the counties association and the towns association to lobby the DNR to put an elected member on their new wolf advisory committee. Self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. Yeah. Numbers are up from 104 to 107 this year. So I think they're in, you know, in 2021 wolf depredations. That's where it was. Do they have estimates what the wolf population is now? 1,200. Yeah, I mean, that's a, yeah. And it's supposed to be at 350? Yeah. I mean, they've, they've got them all the way down into what? Dofford County that's in the very southwest corner of the state. Whatever, anyway, they they they're hooked on, and there's they're more widespread than they thought. Yeah. Yeah. He's just an arbitrary yeah. number, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a couple run over in the matter. Yeah, Dane County. Yeah, then it becomes. Yeah. I'm all for the expansion of wolves as long as they put them in Madison and Milwaukee. Yeah. Okay. Any other question on that? We can just we can move that forward. Consensus to the full board. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. By consensus, anybody voting against it? Goes forward. I mean, you have to vote. Can you vote? Unless you vote, unless you vote no. <laughs> okay, Dale. Oh, no, Justin. <laughs> Dale was good with the birch trees. <laughs> what they were. He took Warren's place. He took Warren's place. <laughs> All right. Let's move forward. Okay. Uh, pretty much subject matters there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and according to the work plan, uh, we'll see uh, Mark next meeting. Uh, that's January 19th. Um, he'll have two things, both the um, 
complete approval to apply for the forest administration grant or administrator's grant. And you'll also share with you the uh, payments to the towns that time of year. Okay. So Mark will be here. Um, we'll have Tim back or me to talk about um, any progress with the comprehensive trail network plan. One thing that um, Tim didn't mention is um, Alta's last deliverable. Um, we have a few more refinements to make to the actual plan. I know the broader public has asked to see that. So Alta is going to finalize that. We'll give you a hard copy. It's kind of big, but we'll get it posted online and get it out to those folks who have been inquiring about it. So perhaps that'll be done by then. Um, zoning, um, yeah, uh, as Jason mentioned, you know, the, uh, the proposed amendments to the shoreline ordinance regarding outlots, condominiums, easements is forthcoming. I don't think that'll be in the packet because it's so preliminary, but what I will do is the work that you did today, which was a lot, um, those amendments to all the campground provisions, you know, annuals as well as the temporary i'll put that in the packet because that'll be on the next agenda as well so with that we don't have any public hearings or we don't know yet no so no we i don't, don't think we're going to have one for another another month yet so we don't we're expecting an application okay cool just a quick update on our division. Uh, we had our land information annual meeting uh, last week, I believe. Good turnout. You missed it though. It. Yeah. So we approved land information's um, two year work plan as well as applying for the WLIP grant, which is a big subsidy to that department. So that was held last week. Vince Kane, we play with LIDAR again. Thank you again, guys, for, for that. And then again, I'll just reiterate what Jason said. Sorry, we got to just. We got it. We got to take it. We got the real stuff. Oh. Um, yeah, I'll just reiterate what Jason said. Um, both he and I were invited to regular board meeting of the town of Sterling to talk about county zoning authority. We're just going to be there as a, as a resource. We're not going to advocate for either way. And yeah, hopefully Brad and his colleagues will be there as well. Is that in zoning? Are we going to have Logan come about some of his? That is in the work plan. That's um, the work plan next so month. yeah, now this is by the way, Shibana going forward will be taking minutes. Um, so we're, we welcome that in the work plan. We have all that scheduled. There's going to be a lot of um, presentations from and in water also in the water this year. Um, and as you, that's a good reminder, um, as a product from listening to our two new ag agents, um, I'll add them to the work plan, um, maybe quarterly or July for the first one in July forth. to see if something's happening. I would yep. think at least halfway through yeah. it so we know something's going on. We will see Michael and Ryan or both or either or. Yeah. I'll ask Kristen to, to um, have them report on their work. Programming and needs assessments later this year. Excellent stuff that'll come. That's all on the calendar. Months. That's all on the calendar. All on the calendar. Yeah. Okay. Just to, so um, give me a new calendar and I'll put it. I have it with us every month. This is for Shibana, on. yeah. Every second. Mm -hmm. Plan and every second. Plan. Yeah. I'll be in there for meeting with everyone else the week of the Put it in there just to, so we can we don't forget we've been that's what we've been doing is the second meeting of each month is work okay and put it in there so that we yep um i wanted to say i had talked to mark after um not mark, eric after he did the presentation on the watershed and stuff because i had attended the eureka town board meeting and there they had a presentation on this table stuff, but they 
totally misinformed about, you know, they're, they're saying, well, the county doesn't do anything about water testing. You know, so I have to raise my hand and say, no, let me update you on what the county has been doing and is doing moving forward. And and um, and I, I think it's really good for us to get that information out to the towns because they're uninformed about some of this stuff. And it's important what we're doing with water testing and they need to know that. Um, the other thing that I had talked to Eric about was when we had the presentation and had the uh, awards. Yeah, the awards. And I said, you gotta get that in the newspaper. He said, well, I've already got a press release written up. I was so glad to see they did get it in the paper and stuff because that's another thing that people don't realize that these groups are working these farm groups are working together and what's being accomplished is important. And uh, so the more of that, I think that we can get out there in the press to the town board, local town boards, um, whether it's even once, once a year or something, they invite board people in. I don't know, I'm just making that up. I don't know how you get that information disseminated to them, but I think it's important because the perception is County isn't doing anything. They need to understand what that things are happening. Yeah, but you speak on the 27th. <laughs> oh, Association. the Towns Association meeting. I will do that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's important. I mean, it was important stuff. For, yeah, yeah. Brian, you brought that up. I mean, outreach is important, particularly those success stories. I agree. It's a challenge for us to sometimes do that, but we do have a network of with the Lake Association. In the past, we've done a newsletter. Um, but I want to thank you for recognizing that. Can you repeat which town had the miss? Was it Lake Town or Eureka? Eureka. Eureka. Tiny Eureka. Well, can they read over there? <laughs> We're doing. We're doing. Well, uh, no, yeah, she had a spot. It's not the same presentation at Lake Town, right? It was the same presentation. There was a presentation that they're giving regarding KFOS, but they're, you know, it's very definite. County isn't doing this, county isn't yeah. doing that, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not the case. And do so, they know that, you know, we're doing two groundwater well upper trade impact that goes through? They do now. Okay. But uh, then I yes. get questions on. Oh, you did water quality studies. Did a professional take those samples or not? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the kind of stuff questions I get. And um, but you know, I made sure that they were aware that those results of those samples were being added to the database that the Wisconsin University of Wisconsin keeps. So they're considered valid samples, whether a professional took them or not. I don't know what their term of professional. They mean you got to pay a plumber. You actually do the sampling or testing the sampling? Testing. testing. Well, okay. no. And it goes to Stephen's point to get tested. Yeah, because easy. they wanted to know if a professional took the water sample. And I said, what's the difference if a homeowner turns on the tap or a professional turns on the tap? I don't know. But anyway, it's just good information, I think, to be able to share with. Uh, so I, I had asked, um, Eric provided me with one of the presentations he had so I could share that with that town so that they, you know, they could see, yeah, there's and stuff. That's happening. what the grants are for too, because now we got an extra grant, so they're doing two this year. Yeah. What is there, 42 <clears throat> minor watersheds that all go into the sink? Isn't that 42? Yeah, we're doing larger hucks. So where are we at again? You asked me this before. I know, that's 42. He says, yeah. I think it's 42 or 40, close, close to 40 yeah. something. But it all ends up in the St. Croix, so they just sort of under that. Yeah. Doing it. Oh, yeah, I know. But anyway, it's, you know, I, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so Jason will be up next time, even if it doesn't necessarily come out in the packet on the condominium stuff. Yeah, um, I, I mean, again, we're you know working with a, a professional volunteer. And so you were being respectful of his time, his work. That's why we won't put him in the packet. But it'll be, you know, it'll be out there soon enough. I, I expect it's not quite a bit. Of it. it's, it's a lot of work, and it's two different ordinances. We're looking at the shoreland and the subdivision ordinance. So. I mean, there again, if we get a little bit at a time, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding. I don't know if you look at it, I guess January 19th, that's two days after that meeting with Sterling. So 
we can maybe report on yeah, the interest of adjoining county zoning authority or not, or what where they're what they're where they're at. Yeah. With that, um, are we to leave then during closed session? Then, guess so. Okay. What do you think? Um, it's it's up to you as the chair as far as what whether staff. I mean, I, I think staff can certainly. I I would support staff say, saying I don't. I would I would say you're okay with it. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with it. We'll need a motion to go in. Yeah, yeah. I'll make that motion. To go in. Go. Is there a second? No, and then just for the public knowledge, uh, what we come out of closed session, uh, the only action we're going to take is to adjourn. Right, right. There won't be any action. There won't be any other action. No. And it's on. And it's the closed session on the up on the litigation, potential litigation with the Fair Society. So I don't know if Tracy might want to leave. Please. Second it. Close in favor, Sam. I think we should have voted no so we could have made her four hours. Yeah. <laughs>